All right, guys, we're back with an episode of The Masochist. Shout out to both Simo and Hossman for inventing the series. Uh, but first, do you want to make your Master Duel experience a whole lot better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the deck tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your deck so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, so we're back. I, I pulled a lot of really good cards right now uh, that we have to discuss. I have a bunch of decks that I've uh, been testing in solo mode. In addition to solo mode, I uh, have sorted some of these uh, some of these cards. So first of all, we have a lot of pendulum stuff we've been kind of building in the background. Uh, this is some of the the better pendulum stuff that we have now the issue with the pendulum stuff it's very inconsistent right now uh, but i could see it actually being quite good in the future like i said right now it's very inconsistent i've like we have too many like uh i believe we have too many we have a lot of low scales but we don't have a lot of high scales i think that's that's our issue we have a lot of low scales and a lot of our uh, uh quote unquote high scales end at four or five or like here we, this one's really good but it ends at four but it can adjust but like this ends at four this ends at five so some of them are a little bit underwhelming uh but we have just a, a bit too many of the high scales and not enough of the low scales and sometimes they just don't really mix and work really all that well together so as of right now like i tested it but it was, it was bricky even in solo mode so i don't think this is going to work for now but I, I think in the future it could work um i've also dragon warriors i think the same as last week machine is uh, I've added some stuff to machine, but I don't think we're ready to play the full machine deck quite yet. We didn't pull enough machine stuff to make it like really, really strong. Uh, we've got best cards we have. This is the one that I really updated, which is best cards we have. This is the one I'm going to try out today at the beginning of the episode. Uh, this one's just gotten a lot of support over just overall. We've got Megalo Smasher is really good. He's a searchable uh, card. I'm going to give this card a try. I finally like understand what it means because of your comments. Uh, comment finally explained what this card does. But basically, a mo every monster drops to... Basically, it, it, every monster drops to between 100 and 900 attack, depending on how much they started with. So if they have 3,000 attack, it drops to zero. If it has, if it's you know 2,500 attack, it drops to 500. This can actually be quite, quite good in our deck uh, because we have a ton of monsters that are just like uh, high attack in terms of this is like 700 that'll beat over a lot of things like this can beat over a blue eyes if that card's on the field uh, the thing is you can't really like build around it because we only have one copy of it but it can be interesting to out certain things because we have a lot of monsters like 1800 and uh um, this is 1900 this is the strongest monster you could possibly have 1800 1800 18 1700 but it gains attack 1500 so 1900 so it can be a little bit interesting i've also like really gone through everything and made the best these are the best cards that we have all kind of combined in one deck um i built it around the barrier statue for the most part now we have three copies of the fire barrier statue we have two copies then we have small world which i'm finally playing i finally like uh figured out how to use it. again i've been playing solo mode i think it's actually significantly helped me uh we unlocked some cards through solo mode but i'm never going to use them anyway i did purposely the element saber ones uh just so that i could test without even if i unlock these i'm never going to use them let's be honest um either one of these this technically speaking would be a good card to use because it's uh 1900 attack so it would be in theory kind of good because it's a warrior that's 1900 attack but i am i am absolutely never going to be playing element sabers ever ever again <laughs> like never never in my life am i going to be playing this all right also another kind of interesting thing that we have going here is we can actually finally summon the supreme king dragon clear wing uh, because I do play the Clock Arc, which is a Dark Pendulum monster, so I do have that available. Uh, but yeah, I re reset the deck a little bit. Let's try it. We've got Fusilier. We're playing Motor Frenzy finally. Um, let's give it a try. Let's save and let's go play. All right, we're in game one here. Our draw is... It's a little weird. I'm not going to lie. Um, I decided to include Eradicator just because we have multiple targets for it. 
he let us go first that's incredible we can activate small world but i don't think it's searching anything helpful right now so weirdly enough i think we activate this and special summon this actually funny enough in attack mode um small world i don't even know what this searches for us if i'm being honest there's zero attack zero defense um they can't search we need we would need any level four can search the barrier statue but we don't have access to that right now so we're just going to set this uh set this we don't have a level three synchro monster so there's no point to even do anything almost have enough for the elder entity i think we just uh we just wait on this a little bit of a weird hand here, but we do have the digit jamming, which is going to lower the attack of things. I might, I might, this might be one we end up scooping. Digit jamming is a very interesting card, but it's it's one of those things that it can get a little bit, uh, it can get a little bit weird. I'm not going to lie. Very, very like not so great hand to start. A few of these cards are like experimental, so I might end up cutting the eradicate. I might end up cutting the assault synchron. I might end up cutting the digit jamming it's funny that i just kind of threw these in and i was like oh i might end up cutting them and i ended up drawing all of the cards that i was gonna cut i don't even know why he's using that i have no idea why he's using that i hope he just wants cards in graveyard because this is the dumbest yeah yeah he wants the uh uh by split in graveyard because this lets him search that was i was about to say because there's no point to even do that um uh, i i don't think we can win this with what's going on here Predator Plants aren't like a super strong deck, but it's definitely a lot better than um, a Masochist deck, that's for sure. And that guy's, I think he's 1800 attack that he just searched. So he becomes, he drops and he becomes, during damage calculation, he becomes uh, 800 attack. Which is definitely not good for us. Yes, yeah, so that this is a very, very weak hand for him. He didn't really accomplish much. But like I said, this, this card will actually allow us to... Uh, It'll allow us to uh, survive for a little while. And this is the Predaplant uh, Spinodia. He didn't even place a Predaplant counter on my monster or anything. Because <laughs> I, I think maybe he can't... Yeah, he, he still could. I don't know why he didn't. Uh, this is... It lets him substitute for fusion. So I think I'm just going to special summon out the Brotar. I'm not going to activate Brotar. I can search Vice Dragon, but I mean, that's not going to really help anything. It's just a free special summon at this point. Yeah, like I said, it's it's kind of frustrating that, like, I, I, I added some cards, like, experimental cards into my deck. Like, oh, I'll try these at one, and I drew all of them all at once. Like, I, like these cards would have been... I, I, I think Digit Jamming is probably the one that is more than likely one of the cards that I'm going to keep. I might actually go back to cutting Assault Synchron. I wanted to play it just because if we draw level 4, which is the majority of our deck, um, we can go into things like the uh, Dragon Shell more easily, and we can go into things like the Altergeist more easily. Um, so I thought, like, okay, that would be kind of cool, but unfortunately, like, we d opened all of the weird experimental cards. Small World, I'm probably going to keep. Digijamming, I'm probably going to keep. Eradicator is another kind of, like, experimental card. We have access to different cards that can use this, and generally, generally, if, uh, if I resolve the Eradicator, I will pretty much win the duel, uh, in most cases. So, that I can't use. It, I think it's crazy, by the way, while I was talking, I think we just end phase here, um, while I was talking... This uh, Preda plant, um, try uh, fill over um, Tum. Uh, the interesting thing about this is it's 3,000 attack, so it goes to zero because of the digit jamming, which is actually kind of crazy. So, this digit jamming might be a card that we keep around in the long run, but that card, this is that this card's actually kind of crazy, and now it remains permanently at zero. So, as long as it resolves once, it remains per permanently at zero. That's also kind of crazy. Like I said, I might cut some stuff. I might, uh, the Salt Synchron might, might be on its way out. Verte Anaconda. Man, this is going to do 500. Yeah, Digijamming might actually stay around. It's actually, like, an interesting card considering how many, like, 1800 attack monsters that we play in our deck. Alright, let's see what we draw. We really need, we need a monster pretty bad here. We are just not drawing monsters, man. I... Uh, we're just not drawing. We play more monsters than anything else, but we're just not drawing them. I mean, it happens. You know, stuff gets mixed. It's crazy how many spells we drew. We drew 50% of our spells. 
and we drew like I don't even know like two percent of our mon like not two but like probably like ten percent of our monsters. I'm not gonna block a 500 attack. It definitely. Uh, this is actually while I'm kind of like w talking here. This is actually a winnable. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, dude. Like we just keep drawing spells. We literally drew almost every spell in our entire deck. We have not seen a monster. What is this? All right, I, I actually, like I said, I'm actually very much probably going to keep the digit jamming. This card's kind of crazy. That's just a weird card to play. This guy's like got an odd deck. We've got an odd deck. It's like ma he's like masochist predator plants over there. All right, let's see. Back to our turn. This is this is definitely a winnable game as long as we draw. <laughs> of course, of course. Small world. What will small world even get me to with this? It's a dark. I mean, it'll probably get me to a level 4 monster, so let's see. Let's get rid of this motor frenzy. I mean, I don't want to banish this. We banish something out of our deck. I want to get to a level 4, so I'll banish a... I'll banish this dude. And then now I can search a level 4 of some kind. And the best level 4 to search right now... Judging based on what we've got going on on the field. We, this wouldn't be bad. It takes a zombie out of the graveyard, but they have no hand traps. This isn't bad for the future. This is actually quite good because it gives us the token. And then we can do stuff with the token. Uh, this isn't bad because if it leaves the field because of an opponent's card, we get to draw a card. So it gets us advantage and it's 19. So I'm probably going to go with this. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. And we have a normal summoned. See, small world is like good. It is an inherent minus one, but it can be good sometimes. So now we can attack and start getting in for damage. And then I don't need to set anything. I'll just pass here. Uh, the problem is this guy was a machine. It's a dark machine. I would have ser searched the uh, Fusilier. He would have been like a cool card to search. Uh, Fusilier being the level seven monster. This dude right here. Because this guy, you can actually set face down. He's 2,800, and if you set him, you can actually use Eradicate or Epidemic Virus with him. I, it's like an old GOAT format trick. I don't even know if it's still, like, a legal trick that you can do in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this Digit Jamming is staying. This thing's actually kind of crazy. I didn't realize how good this thing actually was. The only thing that I don't like about it is that it's bad with the Barrier Statue. Uh, I, I'm not going to search Megalos Smasher because it'll be zero attack. Uh, so I'm going to search the Hyper Hammerhead. Add it to hand. Yep, don't want to don't want to send it to the graveyard. Uh, we can actually put this on the top of his deck so he draws it again, or we could just destroy it with Parallel Twister. But the problem is, if it's a uh, bis whatever this dude is, uh, by Splip, uh, they get to do it again. So I think I'm gonna back to square one here. I mean, is that even worth it or just attack? I mean, we know it's a it's a card that's not good, so it's kind of good that he draws it again, so he doesn't draw any of the, like the good outs. So I'll probably just do that. I'll just do that, and I'll send that back. And we can actually go into the Sioux ship too. I just I just realized Sioux ship would be 200 attack under this. Uh, we can go into the Sioux ship, or we can go into Firewall Exceed. And then if we go into Firewall Exceed, we can uh, resolve the Eradicator. Or we can just save it for next turn, because his hand is probably he's probably going to be on the same thing that he was on last time. So might as well just do it. Because yeah, next turn it'll probably look somewhat similar to it. The hand he has now so then we can next turn just um if he does use the buy split and he searches like a a predator plant fusion spell or something like that or, or some kind of predator plant card that he can use we can just uh, destroy it with the eradicator it's pretty good Let's see that is primordial dragon's not really going to help us right now he becomes uh zero so this is the question do we make the sioux ship and start popping things in the background or do we make the because the sous ship's not bad if this gets destroyed though i think it has a graveyard effect it does have a graveyard effect you can banish this from the graveyard fusion summon so we don't want him to do that uh, so we actually don't want to destroy this and then we've also got the option of the other level four which can search the other that's it's going to be zero attack with our, our card uh, but we can also make the firewall exceed dragon which is another interesting option and this we contribute for the Eradicator Epidemic Virus against his deck. And then we have, I mean, a spell deck with Eradicator, I think would be probably a pretty good option. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and Eradicator him. And then I can just attack over everything else. Now, unfortunately, I do have to Eradicator first. I can't Eradicator and then... It's crazy that I'm resolving this. I didn't even... 
I'm going to call spells because obviously this is a fusion deck, so that's amazing. That is amazing. Okay, that is amazing. Now we enter battle. Let's go to battle. And now every spell or fusion spell that he draws is obviously going to just get destroyed anyway. And he obviously we know now he just drew the uh, Bliss app, which does search, I believe, a uh, Predaplant monster, not a Predaplant card, which is good for us. Bestial Luber is not bad because it's actually a tuner. Uh, but we don't have a level eight. If we we don't if we had the clock, that would be awesome. I don't think we went through the clock, right? You know, it would be in the pendulum zone. Um, like I said, I'm gonna save Mr. Hammerhead for something that we can't out later on. So for now, I'm just gonna go with this. I don't want to destroy this trap card. Oh wow, that drops defense too. That's good to know. Okay. I should have just ah my more. You know what? I'm not even gonna attack that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna pass here. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass here. I didn't realize that, that I forgot that this guy had 19 defense. I'm gonna pass here, and the next turn I'm gonna uh, gets destroyed. Okay, he's still in the same spot he's in. I'm gonna summon the uh, the hammerhead, and then I'm not gonna be able to destroy his monster by battle, and it's gonna get bounced. And next turn, this is what he's gonna have in hand. He's not gonna be able to use it. It's crazy. We already are. Resolving. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. That's really actually pretty good. Uh, especially with the fact that we have the digit jamming in play. Because the digit jamming will... Obviously, it makes everyone drop attack. But then we can activate this later and make it double attack. Or half their attack. So that can actually come in handy later. But right now, we're obviously going to go into this. Uh, now, when we battle... I will take some damage here. But at the end of the damage step, his monster is going to get bounced, so he never gets the search, which is kind of good. I should have done that last turn, but I, I forgot that he had 19. Yeah, Digit Jamming, I think I think this is a card that has a place in our deck. <laughs> this card's kind of crazy. Uh, I don't know about the uh, Preda Planning. It's pretty good, actually. It places Pendulum... It places the counters on us, but that's not really going to do anything. And obviously, we know he has the uh, buy Splip. So we actually kind of know everything that he has. Right now, we're not really concerned for anything. And uh, this has a secondary effect, the trap card, where if a monster's fusion summoned, he can destroy a card that we have. Okay, so I could save this, or I could just start going in for game and just trying to attack here. That would probably be best. Both of his trap cards have graveyard effects, so I don't want to pop them, either one of them. One's a fusion effect, and the other one is a... Uh, when, when the fusion happens, it pops. So I don't want to pop any of his back row. Um, I could summon this and just do 500 damage, or I could just chill and um, leave it in for later for the pendulum zone. But I kind of have power frame, so I don't really need to do that. So power frame just kind of replaced everything. I have so much. This is actually really, really cool because uh, I have so much information on what he's got. Uh, this is going to make all my monsters level 1 and place counters on them, but they can still attack, they can still do everything. So it's completely fine. He's going to send a buy split, which is going to let him search. Um, and the other buy split I'm obviously going to send back. Funny enough, we can actually, now that he turned our monsters into level 1s, um, we can actually go into a variety of things. We can go into the... Uh, this uh night this uh lira lusk monster okay so this isn't too bad we can go into this but i don't even know what would really what that would really aid us in so i think we just go to battle phase and just again we just spread ourselves um and just uh do this and take some damage here take 400 bounces monster back to hand uh let me confirm what he added with the buy split he added the uh, the one that allows him to fusion summon using monsters on our side of the field with the um, what are they called on our side of the field with these uh, with the counter. So he's going to be able to basically fusion summon with our monster at least one of our monster. Um, so his life points are obviously critically low. We can, like I said, we can go into this. But I don't even know if that's going to benefit it. Like, we're going to lose a monsters, certain amount of monsters, no matter what. We want him to get rid of this. Because if he gets rid of this, it, uh... Yeah, if he gets rid of this, then we get to draw a card. Um, if he destroys this, then it's fine. Um, this doesn't really have an effect that's relevant. 
Uh, it can steal a dragon. So the fusion monsters are dragons. Uh, the big ones like Starving Venom are dragons. This guy's not a dragon, but certain ones are dragons. But honestly, I'm thinking I'm just going to leave the field the way it is. Um, I don't think there's a point to really shuffle this back. Actually, this this can be kind of good because when our monsters leave the field, they can start adding Predap cards. But I, th I think we're still kind of in a fine situation. We do have the Power Frame, which can be helpful. And we still have the Threatening Roar, so... We still have a lot of defensive cards, defensive capabilities here. He's going to be able to fuse with one of our monsters, not the end of the world. It'd be nice if we had some sort of a bounce or something, but if we had if we had like a quick effect bounce, this game would be over. All right, he's going to go for the three-headed one. The three-headed one's going to come out at zero attack uh, because he just has, he has zero attack because he, he gets reduced. So he's going to come out. When, if he attacks, he's going to become zero, so it doesn't even matter. Um, and we have Threatening Roar, and we're going to be able to draw. Actually, that's crazy, too, because he's going to attack, and he's going to go to 300, so he's going to be lower than both of these. Uh, but we also, he's going to try to pop that. That's smart. Uh, but we have uh, we have Threatening Roar, but more importantly, we have Power Frame. So when he attacks with this, we're going to become 6300, which is kind of bananas. Mask of Darkness isn't bad, because we can double Power Frame now. That should be very interesting. Double Power Frame is, is, is really interesting. Hopefully, he overextends here. Summons another monster, we power frame in the next turn we attack. That's that's like our best, best, best bet. Is that he overextends and then we... Uh, he, yeah, he summons a monster that's strong and a monster that's kind of iffy. What does this card do? Actually, he has a graveyard effect. Okay, so basically it's going to reduce that to 300 anyway. Okay, that is really good to know. And that's until the end phase. Until the end of this turn. Okay, now he's going to super poly us. I can't respond. But at least his monster is at 300 attack. He can just go into another one of these, honestly, and just finish this off if he has a third one. Wow, Super Poly has an animation? I don't even know. Okay, Dracus uh, Stapelia is fine. Yeah, it's a good... We still have Threatening Roar, and we have the Power Frame. So we have cards here that are gonna... They're putting us in okay situations. I mean, technically speaking, I could have avoided a lot of this if I made Azathoth or the... Uh, the Azathoth monster. I probably could have avoided a lot of this. Um... But I mean, it's it's whatever. It's not the end of the world. Not the Azathoth. Whatever the elder, older, outer entity monster. So now we uh, we power frame, and obviously he can't really do anything about that. So now our monster is 27, and he can't uh, he can't get over it, which is nice. And now we get boosted. That's awesome, uh, because the adjustments from the digit jamming are no longer in effect. So now our monster is the strongest monster on the board. Um, that's, that's interesting. What, do we have any good trap cards? Actually, do we have good trap cards? We do have the Eradicator, but I don't think I'm going to pull off a second Eradicator. Uh, this card's really strong in attack mode, so I have to wipe it out somehow. And then we've got Resonator, which we can make the level 7 if we wanted to. We can go into this thing, the Zeta, and then banish something. So we can destroy this main phase 2, uh, do something else. So let's see. So definitely get rid of this, but this thing can come back. But when it comes back, it gets summoned in defense mode. So at least that's that's good. So he can't attack with it. All right, so that's nice. We outed that. And then we go main phase two. Like I said, we have a few options here. We can set Mask of Darkness and just pass. And then we can uh, double reuse the Threatening Roar. Or we can uh, make a Zeta. But Zeta can be negated anyway with this. So, I mean, Zeta's not bad, but the thing is, this is a quick effect, so it could just place... It, it, next turn, I think he added... He added the dude that fuses away. No, he added an for Scorpio, so he can search the fusion anyway, so I have to play around that. I think I'm going to Dark Resonator here, and I have to go and... I have to Synchro Summon. Yeah, I have to Synchro Summon here. He's going to place... Oh, I forgot he could do this. I just realized he could do this. He made a level 1, so now I just have two level 1s. I should have went with the Mask of Dark... It's alright, though. It's alright. It's fine, because I have the Threatening Roar anyway. It's, yeah, I, for, I forgot. He could just Quick Effect place it anyway, so it doesn't matter. I, I didn't think he'd, like, on summon immediately place the, the Predaplant counter. That actually caught me by surprise a little bit. Orphus Scorpio is fine. We had this guy on the ropes for a little bit, but this, is, this isn't looking too great, I'll be honest with you. This Digit Jamie, like I said, this thing came in clutch, but, like, it kind of dropped the damage output that our deck can do at the same time. Which really put us in a weird position. 
Because by dropping our damage output, it actually prevented us from quickly finishing the game. We had them on the ropes, we destroyed all the spells, we had everything like tied in a bow, and then we just couldn't really do anything, uh, unfortunately. He has super poly, which sucks, he's going to keep searching this. Obviously he's got the discard fodder, and he can summon this dude back. Yep, super poly. Obviously I can't respond, not that I would have. Alright, he just super polyed into greedy venom, using only his own monsters. Um... I'm going to summon that dude back, which is, again, fine. Nothing we could really do about it. I think he's running out of fusion targets that are, like, relevant. If he, I don't know if he's playing the one that fuses with a pendulum monster. That would have been nice for him. We do still have, like I said, we have Threatening Roar. Threatening Roar is going to kind of be a surprise out of nowhere for him. If he just leaves something in attack position for some reason, that would just, like, that would uh, clean up this game for us if we just left something. All right, this is good, because now we Threatening Roar. He's in battle phase. We activate Threatening Roar, and now he can't attack. So now it's kind of, like, shocked. If we had, like, a battle position changing card, that would just be awesome. Supercut's not bad. Banish a level, and then special summon a dark monster from your graveyard. That's really good. And this is going to get destroyed by that effect and trigger. This is not going to trigger. This is not going to do anything. That is, like, kind of annoying. I mean, we have to out it somehow. We have no other out. We do have the super cut, which can come in handy later. So I think, since we have nothing else, I think we have to kind of attack anyway. Yeah, let's go to battle and attack over this. Yep, destroys everything. She kind of saw coming, and then he's going to be able to special summon something back. But obviously we have Mask of Darkness, we have Super Cut, we have the, the Warrior Monster that's going to bounce cards. We have we have a lot of plays here. Uh, and then uh, we're going to trigger this too, I totally forgot, because it was destroyed. It'll add in the end phase. It would be cool if we had a Warrior Hand Trap of some kind. I mean, card advantage right now we're in looks like we're pretty close, so that's good. And I know, because he's playing, I know he's playing Predator Plants, he's definitely running low on things to even add to his deck like to his hand he's gone through most of his predator plant uh engine oh that card's actually really good in a sealed environment the uh scarlet is really good um yeah when we declare a direct attack it special summons it and then if we destroy it he gets to destroy our card it's actually kind of good all right main phase two because we didn't summon anything we played around things uh we can go super cut and this and then we're going to search at the end phase why do i keep putting things in the pendulum zone by the way like why do i keep doing that I guess the only thing we have is Gakaka Magician that's left, but that's, that's not a bad one. This duel is, like, really, really close. We just have to, like, sneak 1,600 damage in there somehow, and we, we, we run away with this one. And like I said, he's really, like, his extra deck, he's gone through a lot of it, so that's good for us. He's back on the Orpha Scorpio engine. He just discarded this for cost. Uh, does this trigger on cost? Oh, from field anyway, it doesn't matter, so it doesn't matter. Try, uh, Trilanthus, we have that card actually, Trilanthus, pretty decent card, I'd say. We have to grab Threatening War, because we just lose if we don't, so. And now we super uppercut, and Vidyom's not bad, actually. I think we go with Vidyom, because he can negate Vidyom, but if he attacks with this, it's fine. If we could just sneak in somehow for 1600 damage, you left that attack position monster, oof. That's interesting. That's interesting, really interesting. So we have this dude, which is not a great card. We have the Gagaga Magician, which doesn't really help anything. We have the Threatening Roar. We can negate this, but I mean, I don't think that really benefits us in any way. We could sneak in for some quick damage with the uh, Gagaga. But again, I don't think that really helps us. This dude recurring himself is insane. All right, so I think the best play is just to attack with this. What can we even summon here? Oh, it's kind of irrelevant. All right, these two, we just sneak in for some quick damage. So now we have to do 1,300 damage somehow. We set the Threatening Roar, and we just pass here. 1,300 damage. we got to squeeze that out some. This has been the most dramatic battle. It's been a little too close for comfort. This, this should not have lasted this long. Uh, threatening Roar immediately before he declares an attack. Although I think the OCG ruling is you can, uh, even if somebody already declares the attack, you can still you can still do it. Let's see. That's not going to help. I mean, that's going to defend our life points, I suppose, but that's not going to help us significantly. Alright, so we can go into this level 7 dude, which is like fine and all, but he's like kind of doesn't 
kind of doesn't do anything honestly it doesn't really like benefit us so i think we can just space the monsters out like we can do some more damage and get a little bit closer again and then hope that he leaves something else in attack mode we just keep that'll do another 300 and then if we get to a thousand we win but i don't what do we have in our deck that can out this dude this dude is insane let me go let me go check what we have all right so we have a few outs we have like crack that crackdown's like the best card that we could possibly draw probably but like there's there's a few weird outs that we have but crackdown is really good cosmo good witch doesn't really help but like there's a few things that we can draw that could really help uh there's uh yeah cosmo good witch maybe but unbreakable spirit would help us win crackdown would help us win there's a few cards that would help us win here uh so i think that we can go with this normal summon yes yeah, we can, we can also tribute these two, but that'd be moronic. So we're going to activate this, make itself level 7. And now we can exceed into this dude and just do a little bit more damage. Again, we just keep getting closer and closer and closer, little by little here. If we had a Zeus, that would like solve all our problems. We're kind of like uh, edging closer and closer here. And now we can do some damage to this dude. And we just set some tokens and pass here. It's the first time I'm actually like running low on time too. Like I'm worried about time. I've never had to worry about time in this challenge. But we're like actually playing like combos and like working. Different cards are working together. It's actually kind of incredible. All right, this is fine. We're going to lose some life points here. But I mean 600 life points and we're definitely up. So that's fine. We can always negate this dude, but, like, it only negates him and prevents him from attacking. Nothing else. This won't help us summoning the tokens right now. Um, there can only be one is pretty good. It's pretty... It's not, like, outrageously good, but it's pretty good. Because we can lock him into one plant, one dragon. And really slow down the game even more than it's already been slowed down. And he played a lot of his, like, removal already. Uh, so, Predator Plants only has, like, one removal. It's actually this card. This is literally, like, probably the only, like, removal card in the entire deck. So, it can really be, like, helpful. He put Prada Plant counters on everything. So now he can possibly fuse our monster away. But he's gone through, so, again, he's gone through so many resources. So many, like, Super Polys has already gone through. He's gone through a lot. Of, he's gone through three Super Polys. All of the extra deck stuff, like, he's he's gone through a lot. And right now, he's about to summon a plant. So if he attempts to activate any fusion spell whatsoever, we can just flip um uh, the there can only be one and he won't be able to fusion summon anything essentially Let's see okay he's going to normal summon the trilantis and he's going to activate that he just outed the monster that we we're going to have trouble outing this entire time and and like i said there's not much that he can really add right now because he has 13 cards le left in his deck we have 15 we might even win by deck out he keeps searching and we don't so that that might be this might be our first deck out win i, I can't believe i'm saying this he's gonna okay you can summon the big dude out in defense mode it's a plant this is a plant we can there can only be one and the monster can't be special summoned okay that's perfect that is perfect so now that happens and he can't summon I get stuck in graveyard. These tokens are fiends, so we don't, can't summon them while we have Vijam. But like, Vijam is the only thing keeping us alive right now, so that's I'll, I'll take it. And he's gonna end phase. Okay, so now we just have to do some more damage here. Fire barrier statue does not help this situation. I, I'm not even gonna summon him because him in combination with something else can actually win us the game. We're just putting him in defense. It's just gonna be a waste of a card. So right now he's under two floodgates essentially. He's under this, which is can't be destroyed by battle, and then he's got the there can only be one to deal with. And he's already used some of his removal, but he would need, like I said, Predator Plants I know very well as a deck. The issue with this deck is it has no removal whatsoever other than the Predator Planting. Predator Planting is the only removal card that the archetype has. He has one in the graveyard, but he would have to successfully fusion summon in order to out this. So Vice Dragon doesn't help our situation, so I'm not even going to put it on the field. I'm just going to pass here. Until we have something that helps us, I'm not putting anything into play. All right, another end phase. Let's see what we draw. Another fire barrier statue. Where were these guys at the beginning of the duel? Nowhere to be found at the beginning of the duel. I'm not going to lie. Like, as, as awkward as our first hand is, was. The only card I'm really, like, convinced I should be taking out is probably... Harpy's Feather Uster, that's bad. I mean, the Harpy's Feather Uster 
you know, it sucks that it happened, but like at the same time, we've got, um, we still got this on the field. So we'll see how it goes. We, we could have been walling up. That is actually quite good. Um, now the only issue is, I mean, we could actually win. It's just, it's, it's always a concern, you know, it's always a concern because this could be a risky play where we could just stall this one out. Honestly, it could be a risky play to, uh, to do this. So I, I don't, I don't know if it's the right play. Because I could just normal summon this. This is going to be the only monster we control. And then we can just use the uh, Unbreakable Spirit. And um, it gains attack equal to the highest that attack that he has. And we can win the duel right now. So in the past I haven't played the aggressive play. But I probably should play the aggressive play. What I could do is that's exactly a thousand attack right. So it gains attack equal to the highest attack your opponent controls. This is 2400. So I could summon Vice Dragon and then and then just do the Unbreakable Spirit. But if he draws a fusion spell, you can just destroy my my monster. And that's kind of the problem. So we could just sit on this for another turn, but I think I'm just gonna go with the more aggressive play. I'm gonna go ahead and tribute the Vigom. And I'm gonna summon this Vice Dragon. I'm gonna Oh man, I didn't realize what that would do. I forgot about that. Probably should have just sat on that Vigom. Now he's going to be able to search into another Prada planning. Okay, so we're just going to set the Unbreakable Spear. We're just going to pass here. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we can do this. Hopefully he just attacks. This is the only monster we control and we win the duel. But, I mean, obviously we'll see We'll see what he does. Scarlet. Oh, not the Scarlet. He's going to place Prada plant counters on things again. But uh, he doesn't have anything on the field that fuses. He's going to lower our attack. And then I to lower our attack. He's going to lower our stars, our... our uh, our level monster reborn which one is he monster reborn in? damn it man he like played perfectly around our card not this guy you gotta be kidding me this guy is so like he summons a monster with 100 attack so we're only gonna gain 100 attack off this unbreakable spirit why did i do this so now we just lose i took this stupid risk and i can activate this but he's only gonna gain 100 attack anyway it doesn't even matter and now we just lose i mean technically we don't lose yet because uh, it's 33 and 100. If we just draw a monster that can get over the Scarlet, then we can win the duel. But we'd have to draw a monster that can get over the Scarlet. Which we have plenty of, but knowing our luck, we'll draw like the most spell card we don't need right now. Fuma Wave is like the definition of spell card we don't need right now. Really sucks, man. Why couldn't we draw a monster with some decent attack? See, I should have just sat on Vidjom. I should have just sat on Vidjom on the floodgate. We literally could have draw drawn this, could have drawn this, we could drew this, we could have drew this, we could have drew this, this. Like there's so many cards that we could have drew that would have been good and we just, we just draw like Fuma Wave. Useful right now, whatever. We're gonna make things happen, hopefully. I mean, this duel's pretty much over. There's nothing we can really do. 900. We are down to 100 freaking life points. And he protected himself. 100 life points. And we're going to lose. Which is insane. 100 freaking life points. And we lose. That is devastating. I don't even know what this is. That sucked. 100 life points. I should have just sat on the Vidjom. I should have just stalled it out. Like, why did I do that? All right. So, next game. Our hand isn't looking too bad. We've got... A little bit going on here this can make itself attack and defense half but there's no point to really summon that right now if digit jamming I think we can just set this activate digit jamming activate or set the hollowed life barrier and just pass here and see what our opponent comes up with not the best opening ever i added this instead of the uh uh, the machine monster the machine tuner level two so i added this instead because i just think it works better in our deck than the machine level two tuner right now the synchron not that the, that obviously this that is a better card than this card but this card maybe just works with our deck a little bit better right now all right so assault wyvern is interesting i don't know what this is or what this does but okay He's not going to be able to destroy our monster by battle, so he won't be able to special summon a dragon from his hand or graveyard. Because this can't be destroyed by battle once per turn each turn, so it won't be destroyed. Now what sucks is the digit jamming is a little bit frustrating for us. We need to draw something that's like 1900 attack, because digit jamming right now is helping him. Alright, he just straight up just left. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that, whatever, after that devastating loss uh, to the Preda plant, dude, uh, I'll take that win there one pack of the master pack let's see what we get always the more exciting pack for now honestly our pulls have been good out of the other pack 
All right, so we've got another Yang Zing. It's also a Zephra. We don't have enough Zephras or Yang Zings. This is another scale that we have. But I, overall, I don't know if this is going to be usable yet. Uh, Zodiac, which is kind of crazy considering Zodiacs are essentially unlocked. Ice Queen. Okay, this, this card is like, it reads and you're like, oh, this is good. And then you read this last effect which is you have to have three or more spell casters to resolve and activate this effect which is if this card's destroyed by battle if this card's destroyed and sent to the graveyard you can target a spell and add it back to your hand that's like not that bad but then you need three spell casters which we just don't have that many spell casters this is a umi card it's not going to help us um tide dangles don't have enough of them vampire scarlet scourge uh, unless it like special summons itself i don't think we have enough to do anything right now but possibly in the future uh, we can actually search this with the glow up bloom uh, for free which is kind of nice yeah maybe in the future we can use this dude uh this is really this is outrageously good i'm playing this like i'm just playing this i'm gonna cut that high hollowed life barrier i'm just gonna play this instead this is an outrageous card to pull it's a level two monster that no it's basically a discard and target and banish a card um, and on top of that, it, when a trap card's activated, we get the special summon this back, and we can finally probably use that level two or do other stuff with this. Uh, Rider of the Storm Winds. I, I don't. We don't have enough normal dragons to really make this usable. But Dino Miscus is bananas. That's it's a really good pull. Right, let's see if we got any legacy packs. I didn't even see. Um, I guess we got two after that win. Just skipped past it so quickly. I'm just happy that we got a win after the uh the devastating uh predator plant thing we got him down to 100 big whale okay so this is just there's so much wrong with this card i, I this is not too bad it's a flip that summons and that adds an equip it's not like the worst card ever we just don't really have too many incredibly good equips the only thing we have is like we have big bang shot i mean we don't have too many really really good equips endless decay okay so this actually isn't that bad this yeah this actually isn't bad if you have 2000 or less life points you can special summon this card from your hand and if this card is no more special summon this card's attack becomes half the life point your opponent's life point so it can be 4000 if they have 8000 but if we have 2000 or less it's a free special summon the problem is um if, if this was just a free level 5 special summon i would have played it because we have some good level 5 things but right now i don't think that's going to work this is interesting because we do have that dragon maid card which is a fusion spell this might come up sometime in the future but it's basically a substitute for any fusion material but the other ones have to be correct so this can be interesting i, don't, I have to look through the fusions that we have but this could maybe come up in the future and then let's see what else that's it that's everything this is also a fire beast warrior not fire warrior why is that a beast warrior i don't know it's a red dude I don't know how he's a beast, but all right. So let's go add Dino Miscus and then go get into another game. All right, we just won the coin flip. We chose to go first. Um, let's see what kind of hand we get. Hands not looking terrible, honestly. It's not looking terrible. Um, I think I'm going to just set this. Our opponent's going to scoop before we can even make a play. Let's go get a Master Pack. All right, Master Pack. Let's open it up. It's like the universe is rewarding us for that uh, horrific uh game we i fumbled the uh the prada plant one so we got a trick star finally i think now nah, we have we have the trick star field spell that adds back a monster from the graveyard but we do have a few trick star few we have a sticker trick star fusion monster we have the fusion substitute for the trick stars um i don't know what else we have four trick stars but that's that's definitely interesting that we have an, a trick star finally Ice Rage Tremor is a legitimately good card. It can special summon any water monster whatsoever from the hand. Um, yeah, this is actually quite good. But we just we don't have enough water support to make it fully playable. But it, once we if we do ever, that's actually a pretty good card. Tri Brigade Showdown. Okay, this is actually for like a sealed like situation. This actually isn't bad, but it, it requires Tri Brigade monsters to be usable. But we don't have any tri brigade monsters we have another evil eye card i think we have like six or seven evil eye cards now uh our believe our first plunder patrol card uh we've got golden gearbox which is a, a katakuri card karakuri card which we don't have a lot of uh red carpet we do not regularly summon uh dragon type synchro monster 
So I don't think we're going to be able to target two resonators in our graveyard, especially some of them. I don't think we're going to be able to do that. And then we've got another Arcana, which uh, this one actually is interesting because this effect is kind of good because we can take anything on our opponent's side of the field. Uh, but then it, you have to give this card to your opponent if we get tails. So I, that's just not good. And that's mandatory on summon. All right, so none of these cards are usable right now, except for maybe the Ice Jade. Well, not, it's still not usable right now, but possibly in the future it could be usable. All right, legacy tickets. Let's let's crack these, see what we get. Always exciting to see what we could possibly get out of these legacy tickets. D time. All right, we don't have enough I, the elemental hero or destiny heroes. This requires two monsters. It is a generic, generic uh, link monster, except you cannot link summon this card unless you have at least three or more cards in your extra deck than your opponent. Which if we're going second, we'll probably do, but if not, then we probably won't. So this card just, uh, this card just terrible. I, it's not going to help us, unfortunately. That, that's a card I think that came out the, at the beginning of link format in Japan, and then it just never came out in the TCG, and then they dropped it in like a more recent set. This isn't bad. This would have won us the Pride of Plant game. That's Koala. 1,800 defense. I remember it looks 400 for every card in your opponent's hand. That can like maybe help us steal a win sometimes, especially with that super punch-out card or whatever, super whatever, whatever card that we have. It could maybe help us steal games sometimes. I don't know. Somebody was telling me, like, oh, yeah, play some burn cards. You get into a lot of close games. But, like, the problem is, if I would have drawn those burn cards earlier, I would have never been in those close games. The only reason I'm ever even in close games is because I play things like There Can Only Be One, Barrier Statue. So, like, that's under consideration. But I don't think our deck has enough burn cards to, really like, make that usable uh, quite yet. So I don't think there's anything in any of the pulls that uh, we're going to change in our deck. All right, so we just won the coin flip. We chose to go first. So we'll see what we get. We got a Barrier Statue. And we've got the Dragoody, so we've got a killer combo here. We have uh, Cubic Ascension if all of that fails. But more importantly, we have the Barrier Statue and the Dragoody. So <laughs> that is a, a crazy combo. It doesn't. I, right now it's asking our opponent what he wants to do. I'm going to guess he has a Barrier... Not a Barrier Statue. I'm guessing he has a Max C in hand. Uh, but I don't think that's going to really benefit him against us. Because we don't Special Summon. So uh, let's... Activate the Dragoodies. Um, I could probably just leave the Cubic Ascension in hand. But I mean, I guess if he destroys our back row, then we can use that. But right now, that way we can block the attack with the Fire Barrier Statue. We're going to discard the Primal. And then next turn, we can Normal Summon Soul Eating, search something, and then we still have something for the Dragoodies. Then we plan ahead a little bit. And then again, if this gets destroyed, it's not the end of the world. If this gets like negated with... Uh, this gets negated with like a imperm or something we can redirect it to the cubic ascension whatever whatever summons with the cubic ascension but we've got a decent little thing going for us we've got the dragoodies the fire barrier statue the cubic ascension so we can cut his attack protect the barrier statue um that is a dark beckoning beast that's fine that is not what he should be doing right now but that's fine. It's fine. I don't, I don't think he really cares about what we're doing. He's doing his own thing right now. My man's in his own world. He's going to search the Dark Beast, which he can Tribute Summon right now, because Tribute Summon is not Special Summoning. But I guess he's got to do what he's got to do. Maybe he's just he's just deck thinning. He's searching. It's just obviously what you have to do. You actually see this deck quite a lot at the, like, not, not the lower, but like in Platinum, Silver gonna give himself an extra normal summon of another monster at zero attack that's not gonna out what's gonna be on the board here so he can't go into the all mirage play he can't go into any of the plays right now he can't tribute this to special summon one he can't uh yeah the all mirage play he can't do he can't do anything so mask of darkness ain't too bad um but not really useful right now we're gonna go ahead and soul eating oviraptor search out uh, the more useful one, which is the Hyper Hammerhead, since we don't want to... Do we add it to our hand? Yes, we do not want to send it to the graveyard. We're going to add that. We have plenty of uh, stuff. We're not definitely not making the Sioux Ship right now. Sioux Ship is not the play. At least not right now. We don't have to cut our opponent's attack in half. I don't even know why it's asking us. It's literally zero. Uh, we don't want to do it, so we're just going to... That's fine. Let's pass, see what he does. As long as he doesn't draw any of the outs, we're, we're pretty much golden. But if he draws an hour, obviously. Deep, deep, deep crap here. 
Now he can't imperm us, which is actually quite good. He can Forbidden Droplets, but he cannot imperm. Um, even if for Forbidden Droplets, we do have the Vigom, so we do have the follow-up play. But this seems to be a fully constructed, totally constructed um, Sacred Beast deck. So as long as he doesn't draw, like, he, he what would he need to even... He's got a real... This is honestly a situation. This is a really bad matchup for him. Because all of his normal summons are, like, zero attack. So none of his normal summons can get over a barrier statue, and I just realized that. So even if he draws back a removal, it's it's actually kind of it doesn't really matter because every monster that he normal summons is zero regardless. Um, and then on top of that, he's got he's got basically zero attack monsters and four thousand attack monsters and nothing in between whatsoever. So right now he's in a he's in a pinch. He's he's in a bad situation. I don't even really need the dragoodies to to do this because again he's not going to normal summon anything with a lot of and there he goes um and that's the game he just i almost kind of feel bad because that is like one of the most terrible matchups for him but like one of the best matchups for us especially with that hand all right so we've got a legacy ticket and we've got gems all right master pack let's see what we get the last two have been ah we got dinomiscus we can't really complain honestly our deck is kind of like getting there like as long as we can protect our barrier statue, I think as long as we can pull that is insane. Light pulsar dragon. One of my favorite cards of all time. That is crazy. That does not actually that does fit our deck. That I, I almost forgot we have a dragon warrior deck. That's like oof, that's a really good pull. That is really, 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 really good. Uh obviously now for the deck we're playing right now. Corridor of Agony. Where I've never seen this card. What is that? This card's kind of a crazy floodgate. I'm not gonna lie. I've never ever seen I don't even know what set this card's from. This card's kind of crazy, but basically any monster special summon from the main deck cannot activate their effects. Their effects are negated, and they cannot declare an attack. All that's permanent. So as long as this card's on the field, all that is permanent. Cannot activate their effects. Their effects are negated, and they cannot declare an That's kind of crazy. Um Really kind of good against like Kashtira. Really good against a lot of decks actually. Good against like the Pearly deck if they summon something from the deck. This is something that we should probably keep in the background, especially since we do not special summon from the action from the deck at all. So it doesn't really matter. We literally never summon from our deck. This can actually be a somewhat usable card. Um, this is actually not a bad. We have three in a row cards that are just like not that bad. This is basically a card that you could special summon when a fire monster is destroyed by battle or opponent's card effect. We can summon this and then flick damage to our opponent equal to half the attack of one of those destroyed fire monsters. This would have won us the game in that in that Prada Plant game, which is like crazy. So this like it's like three like I don't know if I play enough fire. Like I've obviously play the barrier statues and they're like one of our main cards. But like if I don't open barrier statues, like what am I gonna do with this card? Uh, it just kind of does nothing. This is really good but for our light for our dragon deck and then obviously this is like kind of situational but kind of good at the same time uh magician's robe is not usable for us right now gradius option is not usable for us right now riza is kind of insane riza wow this card's really good like really really good so the problem is we don't have any wind monsters but this is like a really just strong card like we don't we have one of the Samorgs. I think that's one of the wind monsters that we have. But we don't have a lot of wind monsters. But this card's like a crazy... This pack's been insane. We got this and this and this and this. This is like really good so far. Mannequin Cat's really good. We actually can make level 2s now. Um, because we have the Dino Miscus. So this card's kind of crazy too. We have Dino Miscus. Uh, we have Gagaga Magician. We have Ryza. We have the cataclysm and the light part the crazy thing is i don't know if any of this stuff goes into our deck right now but like this is some crazy stuff like really crazy stuff actually and then for our super rare phantasme that's actually like our first that's our first hand trap and it's a pretty good one and we can search it for free and the problem is if our opponent's not playing links it's kind of crap but like honestly i think we play this I honestly think we play this card. This isn't this has been a really good pack. This is a lot of stuff that's like good, but like kind of situational. <laughs> it's like uh, more of this like good for the future, but this is like great for the future. So I don't know what exactly of this we're gonna play, but that's like that was pretty good. All right, now we've got our single legacy ticket that we've got from there. Let's see what we pull out of there. Yeah, that was that was a crazy master pack there. Uh, this is not playable. This we already have, and I, I I didn't even play it. I think I pulled this on week one, and I didn't play it. And a lot of people were telling me like, play it. Yeah, I didn't play it. Uh, so let's let's go edit. 
All right, so here's our dragon deck. Uh, we haven't touched this in a little while. I think Phantasma goes in there. Light Pulsar goes in there. I'm just going to save this. I'm going to worry about like editing it later. Uh, but I think those two go in it. All right, so we just, I believe we lost a coin flip. I think, we, yeah, we lost a coin flip. Somebody taught me this. Somebody's a genius. If this thing is red, it's your opponent's turn. If this thing is blue, it's your turn. I never knew that but somebody in the comments said that also you can do this and it gives you all types of crazy statistics our opponent's only playing three monsters in the extra deck which tells me they're probably playing self decay they also have the rabbit mate they also have uh chinese letters which is off to a crazy start uh they're playing a 43 card deck 42 card deck like this is so cool you can just click the middle button on your mouse and then get all of this incredible information and then you don't have to do anything all right, so our opponent is playing self TK. I'm just going to skip to the part where we win this because I don't think you guys want to watch something that you've watched 8 million times. All right, so we just got another win. Let's go see what packs we get. Honestly, I, I'm starting to realize that Platinum 5 is probably actually the easiest rank in the entire game. And obviously, it gets harder from there. We just ranked up. Platinum 5 is outrageously easy because Platinum 5 is just all like either bad players that are stuck in platinum five or it's just bots like it's all bots self tk bots just just normal summon pass bots it's all bots and bad players probably the easiest rank in the game but obviously platinum four is not easy so uh let's go open some packs all right so we've got our master pack here uh doesn't seem to be shining in any way but our last one was crazy and there was daedalus uh this is a light and a dark. It, it has to play with field spells. So we don't have any field spells that are really all that great. We have the field spell from, from like episode one. The one that uh, does 500 damage to the player that's controlling an Exceed monster. But like other than that, we don't have any field spells. So I don't think this is going to work. But it is a chaos monster. So uh, maybe this is a two level one. Yeah, this is a little, a little too specific, this library. Uh, another X seed, which is three level five wing beasts. We do not have three level five wing beasts, so we can't make that right now. We got a second copy of Paladin of Storm Dragons. Uh, this is interesting. I, I, I said this before. If I, draw, if I pull right of, uh, because this card is actually not bad. Because it's, it, if this card attacks a monster, you're going to turn that monster to the hand. That is like just a really good effect that can out anything it can, you can return a, it doesn't target it doesn't destroy it just returns back to the hand it can out pretty much anything if i get enough of these i actually will play these uh starry knight i don't think we have enough of these to really be playable uh we don't have any melodious diva stuff so i don't think that's gonna work this is a true draco monster but it's probably one of the worst true draco monsters i don't think they even ever played that card and then danger zone and we only have ogopogo one copy so this will always go badly for us um so again I, i'm honestly not unhappy to see this i might actually one day play this um because i don't think it's even that bad of a card and then we've got daedalus which is uh interesting for the future all right let's see what we get out of these legacy packs these have been actually kind of good to us too like i i can't even complain they've been kind of good uh, Tiva's an old video game promo. It's not very good. Uh, there's a Light Sworn in here. Why there's a Light Sworn in here, I don't know. But if this card's sent to the graveyard by a Light Sworn effect, it'll flick 500, gain 500. That's not good. Uh, I, I don't know why that card's locked behind the Legacy Pack. And then we've got Array of Revealing Light. Uh, this is like a going second card that can prevent our opponent from attacking. But we have to know what monster type they have in order to do it. So that's... A little too slow and this is our second copy of this card that i'm still not going to use so nothing usable as of right now all right we just lost the coin flip and our opponent chose to go first our hand isn't terrible we've been seeing digit jamming like every turn every duel we've been seeing digit jamming it's actually kind of incredible ah, i don't want to play against this and i don't think we have the hand to play against this i'm gonna go ahead and probably head out i i don't yeah going going second we are not beating that all right, so we just lost our coin flip again, uh, but I mean, it's it's not the end of the world losing a coin flip as long as they're not playing like something like Labyrinth. I don't mind losing a coin flip. We've got Tour Guide. This could be so many things. This could be Burning Abyss. This could be Unchained. This could be, there's like so many decks that this could be. And we'll see which one it is. It is, I have no idea. It's a dog. I, I don't know. <laughs> what is this? 
Add a level eight fiend. I wonder what this is. It's called Labyrinth. I wonder what it is. A level eight. Actually, it can't. Maybe it's not Labyrinth. It could be uh, Dark World too. <sighs> like Psychic. That's actually not too bad, honestly. If this card is sent from field to graveyard, you can add a Dark World card. Or level eight fiend monster. Ceruli. Here we go. Here comes Ceruli. Well, let's see. Are we gonna he's gonna lock us out of playing? Honestly, he's not even really locking us out of playing because our deck is so bad. He discard this guy with Ceruli. Um, to either player's field, he can summon a level four monster to either player's field. It's gonna be Genta. Honestly, I like Dark World, so I'm gonna just see what this guy ends on. But I don't think we're gonna be able to win this with the hand we have. All right, so all of that summoning ended in one Griffin and a Mudcracker or Muckraker. Uh, just that's uh, that's not really all that great. Uh, I don't I don't really he didn't summon any dragons, so I can't steal anything. I I think this can't be destroyed. Cannot activate their effects unless they're linked, uh, which is fine because I'm just gonna attack into Muckraker. I didn't draw any of my tribute summons. That would have been really cool. Uh, because then I could have done something. I can't activate any effect, any monsters that aren't linked, which is could be an issue here. I mean, we, I think we just go into this. We don't have any level five tuners, unfortunately. So I think we just go into this because why not? Yep, summon this. What can we go into? Okay, so we can go into the Wee Witch Apprentice, which isn't really going to benefit us in any way. I think I'm just going to attack the Muckraker, and then we can activate effects again. And uh, I think we can make a Wee Witch here. And the reason I'm making this Wee Witch is because uh, that way Unbreakable Spirit is live, because we have one monster on the field. So that can be useful for us, so we can do that. And also it floats back into the Aluber anyway. And then we can activate this in the pendulum scale so we can increase the attack. And we just pass. That's our best bet. Honestly, he completely underperformed with the Dark World thing. I mean, he summoned a Nightmare Griffin and a Muckraker pointing to each other like that. It's just... It was incredibly, incredibly lackluster. He's going to Genta and then be able to special summon Genta back. And then he's going to be able to... Yeah, Genta plays... No, and then he's now he's got the uh, Dark World cards looping. So that's never good. Um, like I said, I, I didn't think we were going to ever win this. I'm going to go ahead and activate this now. Because why not? I mean, it's going to get popped anyway. I didn't think we were ever going to win this duel anyway. But I think it's uh, certainly interesting. So it's kind of incredible how much better this deck is. But somehow, it still isn't good enough to be played at like the higher ranks of the game. Because it just loses to so many like funny things. It loses to like Max C. And it loses to... Just a lot of random stuff. Like I said, Maxi, this card, this deck loses to Maxi because obviously, if you get, you have to summon like 25 times to even put a a, a board that is somewhat good onto the field. So Maxi just kind of craps on this deck. Anything that, um, any of the unfair floodgates that uh, force cards that leave the field to uh, that force cards to get banished when they leave the field all destroy this deck. Like, it's kind of sad where the state of Dark World, and then there's just cards that are just not in the, that are just not in the game, unfortunately. That kind of sucks for the deck, too. He's going to activate Graph again, pop our We Witch. We're going to trigger it to add back a Dark Monster, which is going to be the Aluber. I don't think we're going to survive this, honestly, but I'll add back the Aluber. Why not? Uh, right now, he's at 61, so if he can just put one more monster on board we, he essentially wins the duel here and that'll put him at 74 he's still not at, at game here he's gonna that he's gonna summon grafa that'll put him at 71 because graph is actually weaker than big grafa okay he's gonna draw two cards probably and that'll did he actually use any dangers i didn't even see any dangers oh he's gonna discard and then special summon the fusion so this duel is over all right, we just lost another coin flip. Today's been like coin flip loss day. We just keep losing the coin flip. It's actually kind of unbelievable. We have, The amount of coin flips we've lost is, is like unfathomable. He's playing... I have no clue what he's playing, but he just summoned a Nemesis Corridor in attack mode. And we do have the out to the Nemesis Corridor. Uh, all right, I'm not really sure what to even do here. 
I could put it back on the deck. I could just summon the Cosmo Good Witch, book it, and then attack into it. I could do that. I have super uppercut, and I think I'm just going to use the Cosmo Good Witch. I'm going to go ahead. This card's actually, yeah, pay 500, target that, and book it. This card's actually pretty good stats, Corridor. I wouldn't mind playing it. Uh, we're going to attack into this and destroy it, and then we're just going to set super uppercut. Unfortunately, with the barrier statue, we just had nothing really that we could have just done here. Like, we could have summoned it and back to square one, but next turn he would have just obviously done the same thing. And just normal summon corridor attacked over our monster. Monster reborn, you can summon back the nemesis corridor again. Things happen. So you can summon that back. He's going to just summon that back and set a card before the battle phase. That's it. But it's fine because we have uh, some other stuff here. This is, you can go into uh, Synchro 7, a Link 2. He can go into a number of things. That's not good. All right, this is not what I expected at all. He went into, uh, he sent Fallen of Albaz, Royal Rare, and Slifer, and Branded Fusion to summon... The Brigand. I did not expect that. So we're going to go into the Super Uppercut. And we can Special Summon. Obviously something. We can Summon Vigom. Um, we can Summon pretty much any card in our deck. It's kind of crazy. Uh, honestly, we could even take a Dragon. This isn't a, this is a Beast Warrior. but I mean, it's a Beast. But honestly, I don't even know what to really go into. This is... Vigom's always a nice option. We can add back a Trap card, which we don't have right now. Uh, we can go into the Dark Resonator, but I think he's going to try to Special Summon Slifer back. I think he's playing like the Slifer deck, uh, which we have outs. We have Back to Square 1, Barrier Statue of Matt, stuff going on right now. Honestly, I don't even know what to really go into. Vidrom is always like the card that is generally good. Soul Eating Oviraptor is kind of like good because it'll help us search another card if we summon it. So I think I'm going to... That's not a bad option. And obviously the Vidjom's a good option, so I think I'm gonna go Soul Eating Ovi Raptor. And then it'll Oh wait, I'm a moron. Why did I do that? I forgot it summons in face down defense position. Ugh, whatever. I, I don't I don't even know why I did that. Obviously I should have summoned Vidjom there and not Soul Eating Ovi Raptor in defense mode. I got distracted and I didn't realize what card was really in play there. We can actually summon back Ash Blossom with this, but um I don't know how much that really helps us. I mean, that probably helps us fine. The thing is, at the same time, I could just normal summon barrier statue and put myself in a really good position right now. I can use this. So I, basically, this is what I can do. I, I can I can use this, uh, discard the full strike right now, right? Because we don't need that. And then we can put this back in his on the top of his extra deck. So that will go on top of his extra deck. And then we can normal summon barrier statue. And now we lock him out of the game. And then we flip up the Soul Eating Oviraptor. And then we go to battle phase. And uh, we just get in for damage. So if he had a way to bring back the uh, Slife of the Sky Dragon. Or if he had some other kind of branded trap card plays. We basically locked him out of all of those plays. And now he has to deal with the Barrier Statue. Again, that was a mistake obviously with the Soul Eating Oviraptor. But honestly it wasn't like the end of the world. Because it's actually a good thing. I didn't summon the Vigion because uh, we would have had a monster that essentially didn't do anything right now uh, we can summon this out to the field uh, we can go obviously into the barrier statue another barrier statue. we can go into the sioux ship right now uh, but sioux ship doesn't end the game so we're just going to go to battle phase and attack oh we won fair and square we won uh barrier statue absolutely clutched the second i summoned that all of his activations went 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 out so he had no responses to anything meaning he had something to special summon and the second we summoned the barrier statue the duel was essentially over all right, let's open this Master Pack. Uh, it's not shining again. I don't give a shit if it shines, because honestly, I don't think any of them have been shining, and we've been pulling actually really good cards. Uh, Nemesis Elephant is a, a monster that is a, what is it called, a trap monster, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, we can declare a type and an attribute, and then target one face of monster becomes that type and attribute until the end phase. Um, that can actually come up for stuff, and it's a level 2 which we now have multiple level twos. We have the uh, cat, the uh, mannequin cat, and then we have, yeah, we have mannequin cat, and we have the other one, the other level two. I forgot, we pulled it a long time ago, so, and it's a trap monster, so that's 
pretty good. Uh, I, I think we might be able to squeeze this into the deck. I'd have to look at it. And it's a level 2 beast, actually. So we have other level... We have that beast monster that... The, the link mon... Not the link monster. The X seed monster requires level 2 beast. So we can actually maybe work something out with this card. Uh, we've got Z1. Uh, this card's not bad, but we don't have a way to kind of like force this to happen right now. So it's probably not going to be playable. Uh, this is his malevolent majesty. So this card's actually not like terrible. It's not terrible, but I think it's a little bit weak because it's, it, it's whose attack is combined equal to less. Yeah, this, this, this will usually when you tribute summon this, yeah, uh, it, it won't actually, uh, be all that good. What is funny is that it actually has these tokens on it, which I think are the layer of darkness tokens. Uh, interesting card art but like i don't think that actually helps us very much i didn't mean to do any of that that is sucks um this is our third copy of this card and we do not need it uh this is a the arc magician card which i don't think is very good and we don't need it uh we don't have an ancient city rainbow ruins we just, we don't have this so sorry uh branded retribution is not a bad card but we can't fulfill the first part of this whatsoever uh, the second part doesn't really help us. And then Chorus in the Sky. All right, so this card's not, like, terrible. But as of right now, this doesn't really have a use for us. As of right now. And that's about it. So none of these cards really help us right now. Maybe the Beast. I gotta, I gotta check out the deck. But this Elephant might be actually kind of good. And then let's go open that Legacy. I think we got one Legacy Pack, I think. Let's see how many Legacy Packs we've got. Yeah, one Legacy Pack. Uh, just a regular legacy pack. No, no shine, no hollow, no nothing, but it's fine. Like I said, we, we've been blessed by this legacy pack. Vampiric Koala, uh, gain life points equal to the damage inflicted. It's not actually, this card's actually not that bad. It's a beast, level four, and when it inflicts damage to your opponent, gain life points equal to the battle damage inflicted, and it's pretty good under that other card. It's good under there, can only be one. It's a decent card. I don't know if we play it, but it's a decent card. Who the hell is this? This card's like actually not that bad if I'm going to be totally honest with you, but it's kind of not that good either. Again, it's like more of like tribute summon support and we do have some tribute summons, but like it's not really that great of a card. It's something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. All right, guys, next game. We just won the coin flip. We chose to go first. Let's see our hand. It's not bad. It's not looking too bad. We have full water field here. Kind of looks cool. Our hand is really not bad, honestly. I think we just set this and set these two and pass. Uh, yeah, Crackdown, Fuma Wave. I think it's a pretty good hand overall. I'm not unhappy. Then we've got some follow up. We've got Fusilier, the Parallel Twister. If they attack with a monster that's less than, less than 1,200, we get to uh, bounce it. Pretty cool. Fenrir. Off to a great start. Um... Honestly, it wouldn't be the dumbest idea in the world to kidnap it. If they're playing, if they're playing Kashtira, we can kind of slow them down here. But if in Kashtira, this card sucks against Kashtira. Not this, uh, the Fuma. Honestly, stealing it wouldn't even be. If they're playing Kashtira, this is actually the right move. But I don't know if they're playing. If this is just a staple, then it's kind of a bad move. Uh, but we'll take it. We'll just take it and move it out of the way. Sometimes you do this and they have no follow-up. So they could just be playing like Labyrinth or something. And if they're playing Labyrinth, then uh, then that's it. And we just, uh, we have this thing, but we can't do anything with it. They're playing Lair of Darkness. This is an interesting one. That was probably not the right move. But we have the out. We have the Parallel Twister in hand. So uh, Parallel Twister. We can actually, if, if this survives, we can actually Normal Summon and then use Fusilier and the Master of uh, yeah, the Fusilier plus the, uh, you'll see, you'll see if this survives, but we have some cool plays here, we have some cool plays, we have Kashdira, Fenrir, uh, plus this, they're both level 7s, which is kind of cool, now, oh my, that's so lucky, we have another Pharaoh moment, Fuma Wave pops cards that are the same attribute, he just turned everything on the field into a dark, so, this card essentially pops two cards, no matter what, it's gonna pop two cards, um, now the problem is that I really don't want to lose this Fenrir, which I'm not going to. I'm not going to lose Fenrir. That's perfectly fine with me. I'm not going to lose Fenrir. All right, but we have plays next turn that are pretty cool. So we're gonna we're gonna bounce the that card back to hand. 
Uh, this dude is an earth, so it doesn't even matter that we bounce him. There's no darks in the graveyard, so he's kind of screwed here. Not bad. All right. We're just going to hope he doesn't have a virus. Nothing, nothing got attributed, so that does not nothing right now. All right, so we've got a few plays that we can do full for. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do, right? So I'm going to... I'm gonna nor I'm gonna use Fusilier. I'm gonna summon him. He's a level seven. Uh, this is a level seven, and we're gonna go into the number seventy-four. And since we do that, this is gonna remain on the field, and we can use the parallel twister in order to send it to the graveyard to pop this. Because technically, the monster, uh, when that monster leaves the field, it never does leave the field because it's become X Y Z material, so it never leaves the field. Um, and then we will be able to get that thing out so we're going to summon that he has cards face down obviously i don't know what they are but no, i'm gonna to have to live with whatever they are and then we're going to go directly into the master and then we essentially have he he can protect himself from targeting once and then since the crackdown remains on the field we can actually use it for free ammo for the parallel twister and then we can possibly pop the I think we should pop layer of darkness because let's keep it a hundred. The layer of darkness is you know what's crazy too. If we draw eradicator epidemic virus, it actually works out for us, which is insane because it turns this guy into a dark. It turns all things into a dark. That is kind of insane. All right, so now we parallel twister, get rid of this card since it's free anyway, and then we can target to destroy the layer of darkness because without that his deck essentially doesn't function and now none of his viruses contribute our cards and we go to battle so not not too bad plays there he's going to labyrinth he's going to special summon the labyrinth did not want to see this this sucks i definitely did not want to play against this he's going to balance it and probably special summon it back to the field yeah this is 1000 percent not what i wanted to see um I don't want to replay the attack. I would have used this. Um, actually, no, I can't use this because this can't be destroyed as long as he has face down cards. So, the yeah, Archon is just screwed there. Uh, this sucks. I did not, absolutely did not want to be playing against Labyrinth. I cannot stand this deck. It's just incredibly frustrating to play against. And now we just lose our monster that we sunk all these resources into summoning. Technically, there's literally no way that I could have played around that, but I mean, it, it's it's a part of the game. The Parallel Twister, Fuma Wave is still really good. Honestly, we're in kind of a slower game state. Normally, I wouldn't want to play against Labyrinth, but he's got like a lot uh, going on right now, so it's fine. He can't, he couldn't activate the Druus Worm in the battle phase because we didn't control the monster. Honestly, depending on this next draw, I think it might be it. Because he has Big Welcome Labyrinth. He has this thing, which I am going to have so much trouble outing. He has he has a lot of stuff right now that prevents me from doing anything. Bestial Luber does nothing. I can't even use the uh, full force strike thing. Fuma Wave does nothing. I mean, I could set it and protect my life points. But, I mean, that doesn't really help. Because then I just turn Druus Worm into a quick effect anyway. Um, not that, yeah, this can just banish Fusilier. Honestly, I could set this, protect my life points, but, like, I'm better off just keeping it. I mean, I guess, I guess whatever. We'll just set that. Unfortunately, we can't even, like, use the Fuma Wave because this can't be destroyed by card effects as long as he has a set card, and I have no way to out the set card. Yeah, we are not in a good position right now. Yeah, I'm, j I'm just gonna scoop this one. I, I just, he has, it, it doesn't seem like he has, like, a blowout, like, situation here, but, I mean, he has too much tempo. Um, we're, we're not gonna win that one. All right, next game, we just won the coin flip again, luckily enough. Uh, I just added the Big Bang Shot. I got rid of that card that we just drew, the one that you have to attack your opponent's monster and then they get destroyed by battle or something like that, but I got rid of that. Our hand is iffy. I'm not too happy with it, honestly. It's kind of weak. Uh, we don't really have much to do. We can set this. We can set the Hammerhead again. Uh, set the Fires of Doomsday, possibly. I think I just set the Fires of Doomsday and set the hammerhead i'm not even going to activate this until we need to it doesn't really do anything for us and then we just pass here he's going to bounce whatever monster that battles and that's about it yeah this hand was a little weak i'm not going to lie but i mean i guess we see, we see what our opponent's playing if they're not playing anything too crazy uh this can still be a half decent hand we don't really have any like interruptions we just have bounce and then protect our life points with fires of doomsday but we don't have anything to like actually um 
to actually move the game state forward. Fires of Doomsday is like a good card, but we really don't have like the payoff for it right now. Oh, this is not going to end well. It's got Kashtiri Unicorn, which is going to search, and then I don't, I don't, I don't think that we can possibly win this right now. I mean, yeah, we just can't win this. Especially with, like, Fenrir and stuff, we're just not... Like, Fenrir does nothing against our current board, but... Eventually, it's gonna do something against this. Okay, that just changed a lot. I, I don't even... I just... Is that a Speedroid card? <laughs> okay, that changed a little bit. Okay, okay, that's... I mean, that's a tuner, so we have Baron de Fleur on the field. I... Will just accept it. I... I that, that, that really, like... I don't know if I'm supposed to be happy that Baron's about to get summoned, or I'm supposed to be unhappy that Baron just got summoned, but... I mean, that... That is certainly something. So now he's targeting our backer. I'm just going to chain it. Hopefully he negates it. And then attacks with his with his Baron de Fleur into our moth. So that would be like the best case scenario. But I guess he's just going to let it slide. Like I said, this card's like, it seems like it would be good. And it protects your life points and stuff. But at the same time, it's like, like I see the future for this deck. I already know what our deck is going to be in the future. Like once the show is pretty much like, I, I, I see the end game. You know, I see the end game and it's probably going to be some kind of a control deck. Like a stun control deck, and I think that's the only way that we actually get to the top and finish this show is uh, is a stun deck. If I'm going to be totally honest, and some of you may not want to hear that, but I think that that is probably the only way that we're going to be able to do this is a stun deck. Uh, we have a decent portion of it, like the end of the stun deck, ready to go. Right, we have various statues too, and some other stuff. But perfect. He attacked that with the Baron de Fleur. That's going to activate automatically. He has to waste his negate. So I don't have to worry about the Baron de Fleur negate anymore. That is perfect. Okay. That's the best thing that could have happened there. And now if we have. Um, now we can deal with Baron de Fleur. This, this situation isn't nearly as scary as I first initially believed that it was going to be. He's going to banish a monster from our extra deck. Our extra deck is a pile of nonsense. So it's fine. Uh, as far as the speedroid, he can make a level 8 synchro right here too, uh, which would be smart for him to do. I don't know if he's going to. Out of curiosity, what did he banish? He banished that thing. We, we couldn't summon that anyway. We can get rid of Baron de Fleur, which is actually quite nice. We can. Uh, the Megalo Smasher, he just got rid of that, so he's going to go into 11. It's probably the Psychic Dude. Alright, can we out the Psychic Dude? Oh no, it's not the Psychic Dude. It's Clear Wing. This thing, okay. Alright, that is definitely an interesting draw. Definitely an interesting draw. So we can actually do some plays here. He can quick effect, tribute this synchro summon card, special summon two win synchros with different names. Okay. I'm trying to plan this out a little bit. I think we do this and attach Big Bang Shot onto this dude. He can always tribute this lane. Which we're going to be... Okay, that's fine. So now we can activate this effect. And then we're going to special summon. Yep. To this zone right here. And then we'll activate and we're going to pop everything in this zone. So Big Bang Shot gets popped. This gets banished. This guy's probably... He's going to probably tribute this dude. If he's smart, he'll tribute this dude. And he's going to imperm my monster. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, it's good because we, we, we forced them to use a bunch of effects that he was supposed to use later. But what's not good is that he's using these effects. And we have nothing to discard with our Dragoodies. You know, clear wing. And I don't think any of our rank 4s are really good enough to deal with this situation. Yeah, I don't think any of our rank fours can actually do anything. He's going to get rid of... What did we... Oh, that thing. Uh, yeah, I don't think any of our rank fours are actually good enough right now to do anything. Because our strongest rank four is... We, this we can't even bother to use. Uh, we've got... Sue Ship can't attack over anything right now, unfortunately. This can crash, which isn't good enough. And... Yeah, there's nothing we can do here. Uh... I think we just scoop. Alright, so next game we just won a coin flip here. I'm not going to lie, we're in a little bit of a pit. So, 
the one of our things is a little so we're, we're in a little bit of a problem so platinum five is too easy but platinum four is like outrageously difficult because the people are essentially playing like either meta decks or semi meta decks so we're kind of stuck in a little bit of a weird zone right now uh where our deck is too bad for one too way too good for platinum five because we're playing against basically self decay people and people who are just not very good and then all right he's gonna go to battle what does this do this card is kind of crazy actually shining this i feel all right, he's going to search out, put Gesmic Orochi on the top of his deck. All right, that's something, man. That is an interesting card. We ha we have the means to bounce him. That's not going to help us, really. So we have the means to bounce him, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Hyper Hammerhead. I'm going to go directly to battle. He's playing a weird deck, too. Master Packer. That can't be who I think it is. All right. We're going to go to battle phase. Attack with the Hyper Hammerhead and return his monster. And then we're going to barrier statue too. And he's going to get a counter, do his thing. So step two, I don't know what that, what's, what is step two is going to draw a card. Obviously he drew the Gizmak Orochi. And then we're going to attack with the fire barrier statue. Um, and then we just main phase two. We still don't have a way to protect the barrier statue, which sucks. Because now he's gotten to Gizmak. Gizmak is like a dream card for us. I would love to pull Gizmak. Gizmak is literally like... It's such a good card in, in Masochist. It's like outrageous. It's a free special summon. It gets the pop. Uh, but I think it's a UR. Because I know I, I have it in my right on my regular account. It's actually a really, really good card. He's going to summon this again. This card is actually really good. Tribute enemy control. All right, damn. I'm not going to lie. We're not in a good place. But we're not in a terrible place. He's going to take that. But like that, I guess, yeah. The monster gets destroyed. So it doesn't get returned to our hand, which sucks. But now he can go into Gizmek. Gizmek is obviously a problem because that's like an endless resource and we really don't have a way to play around Gizmek right now. Hopefully he summons this in, yep, in that column because I was planning to destroy it anyway. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to... Before he ends his turn, I'm going to summon the Fires of Doomsday. Yeah, I'm going to summon them now and I'm going to put two things into this column. I'm going to put here and here. This and this. Oh no, now there's not enough. Whatever, it's fine, it's fine. I'm gonna If I draw a Spore Trap, I'm going to set it here and I'm going to blow up the column. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so now we set this. We can go into a monster that's pretty big, though. Uh, we can go into this. So I think I'm just going to Gagaga. I'm going to go into Gagaga. Bottomless. That sucks. That's pretty good, too. Um, Why can't I activate this, actually? Oh, I guess because he summoned that there. So we can get rid of the Gizmek, but it doesn't really help. And then what does this do? If this card is Special Summon, set one Normal Trap. So you can set that thing back. I can't really out this because its defense is too high. Even if I destroy this, you can just summon it back anyway. But I guess we can go into the uh, Sioux Ship. The Sioux Ship doesn't even help anything, honestly. But we can go into other Rank 4s. So we're going to activate the Iron Dragon. Ice Barrier. That is another really good card, actually, for, for uh, Masochist. We're going to pop that row. Ice Barrier is kind of crazy. Hmm. If we could summon this, but it makes all dark monsters on the field, including his, gain attacks. That doesn't help us. Sioux Ship doesn't help us because we need to attack something with lower attack. We have the out, technically. We have the uh, Hammerhead, so that'll return this to the hand. But this just summons itself every time a trap card is activated, which is like a free summon, essentially. Parallel Exceed doesn't really get out this thing either. So I think that the move is honestly to just attack and then bounce it to the hand and then attack with this. Which which card did he set again? Oh yeah, Ice Barrier. That Ice Barrier getting set is crazy. That This thing's setting a trap. This card is special summon. You could set a normal trap from your deck and it can, it can be activated when an attack is declared. So if I attack this, if I attack this monster, um, he can activate this Ice Barrier. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. Damn. I guess we just put this in defense. I mean, there's literally nothing we could... That is insane. That is such a crazy combo. This is actually a really awesome. I would love to pull that. This is, he has a lot of cards that I would like love to pull. It's actually kind of insane. He has the Gizmek, which is a really good card. Floodgate, which is a really good card. Uh, this is a really, really good card. Labyrinth, Archfiend, and then Ice Barrier. Like He has four... Like How many cards did I say? And he's got the, uh, the Iron Dragon. That's incredible. I'm like really, really impressed. He's got a really, really awesome deck. Yeah, this is, this is, we have played against the Masochist before, but I think 
then again, I can't really judge because uh, I think this this Masochist might actually be better than the other one that we played. The other one had more of like an archetype, but this is like kind of wild right now. Like what I'm watching is kind of crazy. That's out. Um, he's got like a really, really decent setup here. I definitely want to take a look at his deck afterwards. All right, so we're in the battle phase. Again, he, the issue here is that he's got this ice barrier, which can actually negate our cubic ascension. Not, he's going to negate the effects of our monster. So I think think which one do we want to strand on the field i think we want to leave the cubic ascension strand this thing stranded so i'm going to activate the cubic ascension to redirect it's going to automatically redirect so he can't ice barrier and now uh, we're actually going to activate this card so we can move this out of the way so he can't ice barrier our our, our vid jump so we can keep it on the field for now i'm going to let him destroy these guys because uh, they're not quite as important and this thing now cannot attack um, so hopefully we can figure this out still. Vidjom is good that we have that in circulation, but he literally has the out to Vidjom right here. And then this guy is a problem. This guy is kind of trapped on the field right now, so he's not that big of a problem. This dude is a legitimate problem. This guy is actually really good. Gains 400 for every normal trap. Your opponent cannot uh, target fiend monsters for attacks except this. Trap card is activated. It's a free summon. If it's summoned, you get a free normal trap from your deck. That doesn't help us right now, honestly. That kind of sucks. If this gets destroyed, we get to draw a card. So, I mean, I guess we set this. We set this. I don't think there's any drawback to setting that. We can special summon this back out. Just to protect our life points. And hopefully he attacks into it. And we just pass. That's our best our best bet right now. If he, if he wastes an Ice Barrier on it, then that's fine. Because if he does, we can bring it back again with the Cubic Ascension. So we've got multiple ways to get it back. So it's not the end of the world. We do need to clear his board. And he's got like a pretty powerful board right now. He's got the Labyrinth. That, I mean, he's got a lot. Like I said, I'm very curious. He's got 12 cards in the extra deck. I don't think he used anything. What did he... Oh, yeah. he. Uh, I don't think he summoned anything from the extra deck. 12 cards from the extra deck. He's playing a pretty big deck because he had the uh, Kismak. That other card was actually really interesting too. This thing, the Shining Piece of Fila. Is, that thing's kind of nice. Now, what is this? An Orcus. Tributed two monsters to summon it. Again, that's not like even a bad idea to do because Mountain Smasher. Okay, it's not even a bad idea to do because you put Gizmek into the graveyard. Detach one material, gained a thousand. All really smart. All really smart. He special summons quite a bit. Our, our deck, I, it's funny, this this challenge is interesting because you have so many different people playing it. And a lot of people have, take so many different directions with it, which is kind of cool. Okay, he's going to send, gain attack. He's going to send the World Legacy, which we actually have gotten this card. That is a lot of attack because he attached it. Yeah, it's because it leaves the field because of an opponent's card. He's not going to Gizmek, which is interesting. Back to square one is a pretty good draw right now. Does this have any protection? Back to square one would have been crazy. If we just, if we could, if we could normal summon the barrier statue. I honestly think we just pass here. If we could normal summon the barrier statue and then back to square one, this thing away, we would pretty much like be in a really good spot. Cause then I would just wait for the ice barrier. I would just literally just wait here. But this is a rough one. Cause he's still got Gizmek and Grave. That's still like any time he could just, he's still got plenty of Gizmek summons. I honestly think I have to back to square one though. Yeah, I have to back to square one. This thing is kind of crazy. And it just it, it, it just keeps going forever and ever. It gains attack every single turn. I can't afford for that to happen. And then it just puts back the resources. So I just I had to I have to get rid of that and I have to just pass here. That card is just too good. He's got Gizmek, but honestly, this Gizmek is starting to get dangerous because he's like running low on cards and where our deck has much more stall than his deck. So the more he Gizmex, the more he puts himself at risk of, of decking out because he's already at 21. There's only a, so many Gizmex that he can actually continue to use here. He can destroy this, but we can literally summon Gizmex back anyway. And we still have life points to play with, and we have um, this in Graveyard. So it's fine that he destroyed that. Yeah, it's totally fine still. That gets destroyed. This thing, like I said, this, this Shining dude is actually kind of interesting. Did we ever pull this? Yeah, for every counter, he... But honestly, though, like this, this is like a good card against us. But I can't see this being a good card against, like, I don't know, like Labyrinth or something, or like, like Tier Laments. Like, I, I just don't see that being a good card against, like, a meta deck. But it is good against us. 
Fuma Wave is not so good right now. So I think I'll just I'll set it and pass. There's nothing we can really do. If he summons multiple darks, we could do something. If he summons multiple lights, we could do something. But right now, Fuma Wave's not doing much. All right, so he's just going to battle. All right, we're going to go ahead and activate Cubic Ascension to block and attack. But he's also got the Ice Barrier, so he could just activate that. He's going to attack that. I'm... I mean, I can prevent that from ever attacking and then take 700. I could just do that, so I think I'm going to do that. Just so, uh, put that in the background. Negate that. Stop it from attacking. Let him attack with this. It's not the end of the world. That way we shut off the, uh, the Lopter. Three monsters. Let's see what this is. Decode, maybe? Princess. Wow, okay. Especially I'm going to fire from your graveyard. But we do have a response. Fuma Wave target these two he has a quick effect all right that's, i mean that's nothing we can do i thought it was two monsters and he's gonna perfectly play into our thing i actually misplayed completely i was supposed to target that monster and then pop this but i actually did it the wrong way but he happened to summon another fire monster <laughs> i totally i totally screwed that up but he 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 saved us <laughs> he happened to summon a fire monster after uh, after that, I didn't realize how that worked. So you have to target one monster. All right, I see that now. So you have to target a, a monster and then you pop another monster with the same attribute. So now I understand. So I should have targeted Lopter and then pop this. That's what I should have done. So now he's into his uh, generator engine. Small world doesn't help a damn thing right now. It is it is a card that it just it needs another card to be useful. But I mean, at the same time, it searches barrier statue, which is literally our win condition. So we can't we can't really not play it. We kind of have to. Uh, he has the potential to win this duel if he just activates Ice Barrier right now. He, he basically wins, but we'll see We'll see if he does. If he does, he wins the duel. If he doesn't, we lose. I probably should have just set the Small World as a bluff because it's not doing anything anyway. But, I mean, if we can prevent him from popping our card, that's also nice. Also, he's not using Gizmak. He could have used Gizmak and then simply popped our monster. Uh, and that would have probably ended this. I have no point to really do this small world with this we do have other level fours uh, but i don't think any level fours in our deck really out the board that we were playing against right now i think his board is a little too good there's not a level four that we can really search there's not really a card that we can really search right now i think he thinks that he can't out this so he's waiting so I'll just wait too. He, I don't think he thinks he can pop that. But honestly he can pop that if he wants to. He has multiple ways to get rid of that. He has both Gizmek and and the Ice Barrier. Alright he's going to Tribute 2 to summon the Mech Knight Indigo. Which is again fine. That's a really weird play. And then Gizmek which he should have done last turn. Should have done that on my turn. And then he could have used the effect to pop. And now he is I'm, I'm guessing overlaying. Wow, okay. The Exploder Ship. And that's a UR, too. So now I think he can pop that. Yep. He can pop that. And that should be game. Good game. Good game. Solid game. That is incredible. I really want to look at his deck. It's been very, very interesting. So he's just not going to attack with the Vala. Uh, we have Parallel Twister. I mean, I guess we can, we can pop this. So that's what we'll do. So we'll... I mean, we might as well do this. Whatever. I, I know he has Ice Barrier, so he can win anytime he wants to. Uh, but I'm going to pop this, and then I'm going to... That ice barrier is really just kind of something like sitting in the background. He has no zombies in his graveyard, right? With all the random types that he plays, I don't think he plays any zombies. A fairy, fiend, machine, dragon, fiend, uh, fairy again. He does not play a zombie. So, honestly, if I attack with this, I'm just running into an ice barrier. So, I think we... If we set it, if we attack, we lose. If we set it, we probably still lose. But, I mean, he's got Gizmek. He's got other stuff. He's got eight cards, so he actually does not have Gizmek. Oh, he's about to lose then. I mean, that's the end of the game then. He can't draw anything. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I, 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 I don't know what to say. I want to say this guy just gave me the game. I don't know what... I, I, I don't know what just happened. I... I I, I'm, I'm in shock. I don't know why he didn't attack. I don't know why he didn't attack all those turns. I don't know if he, I, I don't know if he knows how those cards work or not, but I, 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 I'm in shock. Let's go look at his deck. All right, so this is our opponent's deck. It is, I would say, probably 
this has to be like a masochist deck but i mean look at this this is actually really interesting it's got lilith he's got the iron dragon he's got a lot of good cards he's got rocket caliber i would love to pull that i don't know what that really does the tier limit he's got some pretty good luck vishuda and he has the ashuna does he have the monk he has a monk wow he has this which is a really good card ogre archfiend he has he has this the gamma seal thunderbird gizmec orochi this is crazy eldlich he has the other part we have he has aether um the evil empowering dragon we obviously have the other pendulum girl but he has aether that would be a pretty cool pull pot of duality is awesome because it can help us like this is actually really, ice bear is an insane card i really this is one of those cards that seems like it sucks but i would love to pull ice bear this is actually a broken card i don't think he actually has anything to search with the ice bear either, does he yeah i don't think he actually has a high level water monster to search a uh, gamma seal his gamma seal he can search gamma seal so he can make an attack zero and he can search gamma seal so that card would be broken this is obviously great um zoma the spirit safe zone yeah really awesome deck really awesome deck and he's got a royal one of my was my fate one of my favorite link monsters of all time he's got a royal mech necros adi max crazy deck all right let's open this pack uh we didn't get any i don't know it doesn't matter what it says uh it says that we don't have any hollows but it doesn't matter uh we can't use this this requires buster blader we've got trap eater is not a bad card but it can only be summoned by sending a face up trap your opponent controls so that and it is a level four tuner like this card's always been kind of interesting but you have to be essentially playing against a floodgate deck for it to be useful it's a good side deck card but not really um, in the way that we have this we don't have enough exodia pieces or setup to actually be able to use this unfortunately at emancipator analyzer is interesting it's a level four tuner that's a free special summon if we're going second so that actually can be good and we did pull that other at emancipator card a long long time ago um yeah this card can be good but i don't think it's good right now it is a free special again going second this is actually quite nice but going first it's kind of useless uh this is virtual world related i don't think we're gonna be able to use it another cubic card this is interesting all right so this card is actually quite good but we do not have enough cubic stuff to be able to play it i think we only have two cubic cards they are they're good and all but we just only have two we have another mecha phantom beast card all right so overall this card is actually not bad uh, we have a lot of mecha phantom beast cards but like we don't have any payoff for any of this stuff like we we don't really have a ton of payoff for tokens we don't have a lot of ways to use this stuff this is a cool level three tuner but honestly i don't think it's better than the resonator because the resonator protects itself this if uh, basically if you control a token uh this can be destroyed by battle or card effect that's pretty typical but if your opponent controls a monster we can banish this and then special summon a token like that effect's not too bad it really isn't like that bad at all I'd say the only like real issue, and you can you can uh, uh, synchro summon um, with Mecha Phantom Beasts in your hand or on your field, which is kind of crazy. But like again, like we don't have this can only be used for a synchro summon of a machine monster, and we don't have any synchros machines that we can even use right now. So this might be a future card that's really cool. And Paul, a cool name, cool everything. And then we've got Decisive Armor, which we don't have um, enough of the surrounding materials to make this card a usable card. All right, Legacy Pack. Uh, let's see what we get. The Legacy Pack's been actually kind of good to us. Uh, I, I can't really complain to it. It gave us two barrier statues and gave us like a bunch of random cards to use. Uh, this card is really not even that bad. So if our opponent attacks us, change to defense position, negate the attack. I think on episode one, I probably would have used that card, but it's too late now. Uh, this card's not very good at all for giving Maiden. All right, we just won the coin flip and we chose to go first our hand is really not looking to this is the kind of hand that i want when i'm going first uh we've got fusilier we're gonna set this uh yes we want to I, I don't know why they asks us that as if we can do anything else um and then we're gonna cubic we're gonna crack down and we're gonna set the uh whatever this is the super super cut and then we just pass here uh, there's no point to set the parallel twister and then whatever's left over from here we can just uh, use next turn mr mark king interesting name let's see what we get like i said our hand is really not it wasn't too bad for going first as long as they don't have like a lightning storm to start the game uh this should be fairly fairly okay he's playing scare claws which if i take this there's a solid solid chance that he can't go into the the little guy and his turn just ends honestly i think that it wouldn't be a dumb idea to just take this because again if we just take this 
yeah, like I said, it, it, there's a strong possibility that it just, um, it just goes nowhere. So he can negate. Okay, so he's gonna be able to negate our um, crackdown, which is which is not the end of the world. So I guess we take this. So what did this card actually accomplish? So he 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 had the ability to negate our effect, but I imagine. Okay, so he's just gonna scoop. Okay, he, he has no idea what we're playing. He's gonna scoop anyway. I'll take it. I can't believe we just beat that. Uh, but yeah. So if I take that, he can't summon their link. His link one. So his plays are essentially over. That card didn't negate because my effect is continuous and that would just negate the effect but it doesn't negate the continuous applied effect so uh we got to take his monster anyway and since he can't continue to do anything because he doesn't control any scare claws anymore uh, his turn is essentially over fair win i'll take it all right so this was his deck he was playing a 60 card scare claw Kashira deck and this is honestly one of the better decks that we've ever beaten this is actually a legitimately like a pretty good deck his extra deck needs to be uh, filled out a little bit more for sure uh, but as far as decks go this is probably one of the best decks we've ever beaten all right time for a master pack let's see uh we've got it's hot it's, hot, it's shining so that's nice right so to start off we got Wat kiwi we already have this card but it's not good stardust phantom all right so this card isn't good because we don't have any of the supporting air supporting cards for that aruha is interesting how many of these do we have i gotta check how many unchained cards we have we have this we have the Unchained Trap, and I think we have one other Unchained, which is actually quite interesting. As long if we get some more of these, I might actually play these, but I think three Unchained cards for now might not be good. Spiral Tough. So this can be possible removal, but the issue with it is it's like a... You know what? I might actually play... It's a Warrior, and it's a Normal Summon, and it could pop a card, right? So we guess, we guess, and then we could pop a card, but it's it's a little bit weird. I don't know if that might go in our in our deck. I might might actually work. Uh, we got another virtual world card, but I don't think we have enough to make them playable. Artifacts aren't good enough right now. Cold enhancer. So this can basically put an ice counter on a face up monster, and this card gains 300 attack for every ice. So basically, this is a 1900 attack monster. Yeah, in translation, we could, but, uh, but then we have to discard a card. Yeah, this card's not good. Uh, it's too weak right now. Shadow vampire. Uh, we uh, we actually pulled another vampire card, but I don't think this is good. Honestly, Spiral Tough might actually be replacing a card in our deck because again, it is actually a normal normal nineteen hundred yeah a nineteen hundred normal summon, and if we guess right, we can pop a card. So this card might actually be going in our deck. All right, let's open these legacy tickets. Let's see what we've got here. We've got a updraft. Remove all fo fog counters. Inflict three hundred. Not very good. Uh, boomerang elemental hero wild heart gains 500 attack doesn't isn't relevant to us because we don't have elemental hero wild heart and even if we did i wouldn't play that card because it's not very good uh bubble blaster i don't have a bubble man long nose i think we've already pulled this and i read it last time and i said i wasn't going to play it so i'm not going to play it this time so we got two back-to-back -back elemental hero cards for heroes that we don't have return of the six samurai don't have enough six samurais to make that good uh that is not helpful for anybody its stats suck and it's weak. I have to check if it's a tuner. Maybe that'll make it usable. XYZ Ray Pierce. Okay, so interestingly enough, this card is actually not bad. Uh, we can banish a dragon and a worm from our graveyard to summon another copy of this guy. But we only have one. So as of right now, it's kind of not usable. But if we pull multiple, it might be usable. Uh, then it has another effect, which is a little bit weird. Uh, because if it's sent to the graveyard from field, from field to graveyard, we can inflict 500 to our opponent. Now this card's name is XYZ Ray Piece. If this was XYZ material and it's detached, it doesn't do any of the burn. What does this have to do with XYZs? It's like an it's like the opposite of an XYZ card. Why is this an XYZ card? I, I have no idea. Muka Muka. Gains 300 for every card in your hand. I don't think this is ever going to be really usable. Even if we, let's say we are going second, we normal summon this card. It's 5 times 300 is 1,500 plus 600 is 2,100. The most they can have is like 2,100. And I, I I don't see myself needing them. I mean, we have 1,900 normal summons. We have 2,300 normal summons with drawbacks. So I don't see myself needing to play that card. And that's it. That's now Let me check this guy. Is he a tuner? No, he's just, he's just a normal beast so the only thing like i said is spiral tough all right so we just lost a coin flip but our opponent chose for us to go first we drew a hand that isn't particularly good by any means we have a lot of monsters very monster heavy hand unfortunately we have phantasme which is like kind of cool if he 
plays links i mean that that's cool uh we have this if he plays into our column we have the this dude that i'm just going to set in defense mode but our hand is not very good i'll be honest with you um we're waiting on him because he probably has a max c so hopefully he shotguns the max c because we don't have anything um but i guess we'll just see we're, we're it's a waiting game all right so i'm just going to set this and just pass and hopefully our opponent just plays into our columns um, yeah, this hand was kind of rough, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, again, like, what are you gonna do? Sometimes you're gonna get rough hands. There are some cards that we just have not drawn yet. At this point, we never pulled through that yet. We just, I mean, it's, I guess it's a numbers game. There's some cards we draw all the time, and some cards we just never draw. So we guess we just gotta wait for, to, to see them. Uh, he's playing Neospatians, which is interesting. Could be, probably Heroes, but with Neospatians. Uh, which means he's not... He's only going to go into one Link Monster, so at least we know that. So if he's going into Link Monster, and obviously, hopefully, he keeps playing into this column, which he is. So as long as he keeps playing into this column, that's good for us because we're going to be able to use the Iron Dragon eventually. Now he searched Neos Fusion. This is obviously very a very strong card. And because he went into Neos Fusion, he might not actually be doing anything else neos fusion is kind of crazy too i mean our deck is not super good so neos fusion might not be so good but like neos fusion is kind of a crazy one all right so he's going to activate the neos fusion uh nothing really i could do here i just gotta hope he sets a card in this column and gives me a way to out his monster neos fusion is kind of crazy obviously it's gonna go into the armed neos too which is kind of, like I said, it's kind of crazy. We have the ability to summon the Iron Dragon to pop this if we need to. Alright, so for some reason he's actually not attacking with Arm Neos, which would have been a smart move. He's attacking with this instead. If he attacked with Arm Neos, he would have gained an awesome effect. He could summon any hero, any elemental hero fusion monster from the extra deck, ignoring summoning conditions if he had just attacked and used Arm Neos instead. I, I don't know why he did that. And unfortunately, the Antantian... Hasn't been coming in handy. So Phantasma is dead. Uh, because he didn't go into any links. But I mean, what else, whatever. It's not the end of the world. We have Spiral Tough, I guess. Hopefully he sets something. That's, he doesn't set anything. So hopefully we draw something we can set. We do. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So we have some place here. We definitely have some place. So first things first. We summon out the Spiral Tough, right? Yeah, we summon out the Spiral Tough. Which, right now, I don't think he has anything. He can't use this effect. Um, and then we set the small world. So now we can use the iron dragon. I'm going to activate this to pop this column here. And destroy the arm dragon. Arm Neos. And he can protect it. Okay, well, I mean, that's fine. Because at least now he protected it. And we can go to the next card. So we're going to use the spiral double agent. Um, we're gonna call a monster card, right? It, it's we can declare our type and then target one card your opponent controls. So I'm gonna guess it's a monster because he's playing a hero deck, but honestly, it could just be anything. And we're gonna target the arm Neos. Hopefully, it is a monster, and it is a monster. Okay, so we get to pop that. So that's good. Uh, we can go into the Sioux ship here. We can do a few different things. We can go into the small world, get rid of the Megala Smasher, which I think we are going to do. Because, yeah, we can get rid of the Megalo Smasher and go into a pretty interesting line here. Uh, we can get rid of the Phantasma too, but honestly, I don't know how much that really does. Uh, let's see. What could we even search that would really help? Jagoodies, maybe? Jagoodies doesn't really help. Hyper Hammerhead doesn't really help. None of our monsters really help. But definitely, Megalo Smasher is not doing a thing for us, so we can banish that. What can we get to that would actually like legitimately help us here? We got to go to a level four and then maybe Brotar would help us. So I think I'm going to try to get to Brotar. So I'm going to banish uh, a level four light, which would be this. And then now we can get to Brotar. Oh, no, I guess we can't get to Brotar. Actually, you know what would actually maybe good be good for us is we don't have like a double normal summon. Otherwise, I would have gone into barrier statue. But we don't have that. So I think actually this dude's not bad. If you control a warrior, you can target an additional, but that can bounce something. But honestly, I think the best card for us is probably the Soul Eating Ovi Raptor, if I'm being honest. Because that'll get us an additional monster, so that wouldn't be too bad. If, uh, 
Or a Luber wouldn't have been too bad. We could have stole his monster. But, I mean, that wouldn't really help us right now. And then we've got Motor Frenzy. Which I haven't summoned, so I think I might actually search that. Just in case he goes into the links. I, I'm going to search that. Because this actually has some interesting effects that can actually help us uh, later on. It gains attack and helps us get over stuff. Uh, now I think we go into the Sioux ship. Does this have any special protections? Okay, so this doesn't have any special protections. We could destroy this by battle with the Sioux ship and then pop this. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go Sioux ship. Overlay. Summon out this. Like I said, we're kind of fighting for our lives right now. But if, if we're being serious here, he's got a full hand. And he's got all of the cards he needs to beat us anyway. Got a full extra deck. He's used one card in his deck, Honest Neos. I mean, okay, that's that's not good. He's going to gain 25. He's out at our monster. He's probably not going to Link Summon, so I think we just lose here. Uh, there's nothing that we can do. I mean, we put up a fight for sure. We definitely put up a pretty good fight, but there was nothing that we could do. All right, we just lost a coin flip. We are going second. Let's see what our opponent does. Our hand's not looking too bad. Uh, I think this is our first time drawing the uh, the Conquistador, like, like ever. That's our first time ever drawing it. Our hand overall isn't too bad. He's playing Exo Sister, which is not what you ever want to see. I think he's going probably he's going to get to the D shifter if I'm if I'm going to guess he's getting to D shifter oh Martha I mean, okay that's fair enough he got to Martha um his banished face down even though everything got revealed anyway he's going to set and pass I mean I get nope he's not going to set and pass I'm going to be honest with you I don't think we can beat this this seems like a crazy this seems like four card yeah two this seems this is two exceed monsters i don't think we're going to beat this with all the banishes they have uh they got this one that deck banishes way too many cards i'm not i'm not i just can't i can't do it they're too good all right we just lost a coin flip again our hand is actually kind of good but we lost a coin flip when we're playing against sky strikers I, I don't care what hand i draw i'm not beating sky strikers they are like the perfect perfect uh card against our like they're the perfect out to our deck all right next game we just lost a coin flip again our hands not looking too bad but it's more of a going first hand for sure than a going second hand all right eternal soul is going to get set directly i don't know if he has access to dark magician or not but that's already not bad now he's got the Dark Magician access for sure. Now, if he just has Circle, he pretty much wins the duel. Circle, obviously, is the real problem. Now, he doesn't have access to Circle, but he has Eternal Soul. Honestly, his hand's not too great. We we can get to Barrier Statue, but I mean that's not going to help. We're going second, so... The best thing we can get to is... The Iron Dragon is probably the best thing that we can get to right now. So we're going to Small World into the Iron Dragon. We'll see if he has a uh, response to this. He could Ash this and then just end our line. Uh, we're going to Megala Smasher. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. So we need to pick something that is like an Earth. Yeah, water, level 4, Earth. So now, I think this doesn't have anything in common with its Cyber Earth. The only thing it has in, in common with it is level 4. So I think we're going to pick that. I'm going to pick that, and that should get us to the Iron Drag. Yeah, there you go. Uh, let me just double check if there's anything else that's better. Like I said, we can get to Barrier Statue, but we don't have anything. We need like something like a Moon Mirror Shield or something. That would be really good. I want to use... I want to be able to pop that, but honestly... I don't know if it even helps. I guess we can set this here. Now, here's the troublesome part, is... Unless this is face up, it doesn't destroy all his monsters. So I think that what we do is we just go to the end phase. And if we go to the end phase, we can trick him into activating this. And then we can activate Iron Dragon and have this get popped. I think that is probably the best thing that we can do. Because this is a quick effect. So you can even activate in the end phase. Obviously, it's better. Okay, perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. So he's going to activate that. And then we're going to chain the Iron Dragon. So now that that's face up, it'll blow up his board. Because that's our... It's a free way to out the Dark Magician. Because right now, even if we did... And uh, I guess he does get to resolve that. Uh, he, dark Magic Attack. Okay, but he's not going to have Dark Magician. So we're going to be able to pop that. 
and then that's going to obviously destroy everything. And our trap is chainable, right? We have Threatening Roar, so it's chainable anyway. Super Uppercut we might lose, but we do protect our field for a little while here. That's probably the best play that we could have made there. That could be another Eternal Soul, which would suck, but um, we have to live with our consequences, right? This pops any card on the field. Target one card your opponent controls. Yeah, so I think we could go into this or we could go into Motor Frenzy. And then this would be our first time actually going into this. So we can summon this Motor Frenzy or we can just summon Spiral Tough and then target this and try to pop. So I think I'm going to just go with the Spiral Tough play. Because Spiral Tough can target... I'm going to say since he's playing Dark Magician, it's probably going to be a spell card. So I'm going to go for spells. And I'm going to target the face down card. Dark Magician plays a high level of... Yep, I got it right. And that gets popped. It's a Metal Reflex Slime. Um, I can go to battle right now and do about... What is that? Uh, 54. Or I can make a rank 4 and start popping things. So I can make the Sioux Ship and pop things. I can make the Sioux Ship or... Because then I can get rid of this Field Spell. But this Field Spell is not doing anything right now anyway. So I think that... We just go to battle because right now, like I said, it's not really doing anything anyway. So I think we just go to battle. Attack three times. And he's got, what does he have? Guardian Slime. This whack-ass card. Alright, so now we attack with this. It'll make it 19. Defense, so it'll match the defense. And then we just attack for 2,000 with the uh, this thing. And then he's going to be able to search here. Which sucks, but I mean, what are you going to do? It's life. It's life. Oh, yeah, he doesn't search. Okay. Main phase two. Uh, we could make a rank four, but like none of our rank fours are actually like proactive. It's not like Abyss Dwellers or like Baguskas or anything. They're just kind of like... I guess we can go into this. So every time he special summons, the monster gets booked. I guess we can go into that. But honestly, like I like our field presence right now. I actually like the monsters that we have. like i said we can make this and i guess it is kind of like the best like proactive card but I, my problem is if i do that then i don't draw anything it kind of sucks but i mean leaving these on the board don't really do anything anyway so i'm just gonna go ahead and and uh i'm gonna go ahead and make this because honestly it, it, it probably is better than just leaving our empty board so i'm gonna make that summon in defense mode so if he special summons anything it just gets booked and then if it gets booked we have the ability to use the uh super spiral tough to um to pop it possibly if we guess correctly so far we've guessed correctly multiple times which has been like kind of nice as long as we keep guessing correctly i think we've got a, a good <laughs> situation on our hands here so far this duel has been a lot closer than it should ever be we should have already lost a million years ago all right so he whiffed on the uh he whiffed on the dark magical circle he's going to set a monster i don't know what kind of deck he's playing but i mean i don't really care here eradicator which works with motor frenzy okay so i think we're going to activate this and we're going to say it's going to be a what would he arrange what would he put next i would say if it's dark magician they want to see a spell so i'm going to say spell i'm going to target the face down card perfect um that's an ash i guess we can put this in attack mode we can summon the motor frenzy by tributing this and motor frenzy will be enough for eradicator so we can have Motor Frenzy, Tough. I don't want to get rid of Tough, but I think I have to because Motor Frenzy is just it's just better and it works with... Uh, it's better plus it'll beef itself up, which will make it... It'll beef itself up and it'll make it uh, usable with Eradicator. What can I summon? Oh, the uh, little guy. So now I think we just go to battle and we have, like I said, we have Eradicator. So live and active right now. I, I don't think that's... It's going to get better than that. And we have the Evil Swarm here to stop monster effects so we have a pretty this is one of the better best like state game states that we've created ever we have uh motor frenzy which floats even under eradicator and it floats into two i think dark monsters no two earth machines so we can't really do anything with them but it floats into two monsters uh we have eradicator that's live we have evil swarm nightmare to book anything that's up and we win wow that was legitimately one of the best board states we have, like, ever created. Everything kind of just flowed very well. Very, very well. Alright, so we got two legacy packs out of that. And we've got... What the hell is that? Has anybody ever seen this? What is this? What the hell is this thing? Alright, time for a master pack. It's probably going to be the last master pack of the episode. This one was getting kind of long. 
and it's time for me to edit. Let's uh, let's see what we get here. We've got a level one. All right, so this card's actually not bad if we can get three level ones, uh, but three level ones is kind of steep. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this is uh, another Luna Light card. It makes Luna Lights gain attack. It's not gonna help. This isn't bad, but we don't have any other uh, cards of that. This isn't bad. Diana Light Spirit just banishes a light to summon itself. Um, you can make yourself gain a thousand life points. I mean, that's not bad. Sphere Karibo isn't bad. That's our second copy. It's another card that's not bad. Chaos Sorcerer is definitely not bad. That's really good. We have like, look at this Chaos deck that just like sprouted out of nowhere. Uh, we've got Orcus Symbol Skeleton, which is also not bad. Again, just, man, this is all not bad. Uh, Symbol Skeleton is definitely playable. I don't think we have enough Orcus stuff to make it playable. And we have Dro B Trooper Formation, which we've pulled before. Wow. Okay, this is another, like, more cards that are just, like, for the future, kind of good, but I don't think we have enough lights to make this usable. We have, like, a little chaos engine going on here, like, these five cards here, but, like, we just don't have the, 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 the cards needed with all of these, so we don't have any Phantom Knight cards, unfortunately. We do have lights, but none of our lights are, like, crazy good. Uh, Sphere Grebo's kind of good. Uh, chaos Sorcerer is definitely good and i'm going to look at our lights and darks and see if this is playable in our deck orcus symbol skeleton is kind of crazy uh yeah like overall pretty good uh pretty crazy all right let's see these legacy tickets uh we got two legacy tickets let's see what's in them so we've got beast of the pharaoh honestly not even a bad card we just don't really have the stuff to use with it mother spider uh, this is again not bad, but we just don't have enough insects to use it. Honestly, like not even that horrific. Uh, it's kind of like a free special summon. Well, not really free. Mystical Moon. Equipped to a Beast Warrior against 300 attack. P basically useless. And then we have, I don't know what kind of card this is going to be. Okay, this is a DDD Divine Zero King Rage. Our, our overall, this card is actually not bad. The Go DDD Divine Zero King Rage is actually not bad. This can actually end games for us. And we can tribute summon this with the two uh, tokens, actually, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the two tokens off of the Fires of Doomsday. Overall, this card is really not like a bad card at all. Uh, but I don't know. Two tributes to summon this. This isn't bad. It can't be destroyed by battle. And you take no battle damage involving this card, so it's actually not bad. If I had things like Reasoning in my deck, I would maybe play this, but like this, we don't have a lot of ways to special summon this monster out for free. It can attack directly by tributing one other monster, and it gains attack. If, if our opponent's life points are 4,000 or less, it gains attack equal to our opponent's life points. So that's, again, it's like not bad because we get put in situations where we're, the games are very, very, very close and then we just end up losing. Uh, so this card would be good. But again, I'm just kind of on the fence. It's really not a bad pull. Like on this, there's a million things that could have been worse. Overall, I think it's a decent pull. But I think this is the end of the episode. We have a lot of footage to edit. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a fantastic day. La, 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 la,